Okay. Um, that's all right now, Andrew? Yeah. Yep, beautiful. We might get started, please, um, if we could stand for the local government prayer and acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of our beautiful lands and our surrounding waters, um, the Ramangiri and the Narangiri people. As a community, we recognise and we respect their cultural connection with our land and with our water. Mighty God, we ask you bless this council and allow it to be an agent of change to the people of this city and beyond. Direct and pros prosper its deliberations to the honouring of your name and the welfare of the people whom it serves. Amen. Amen. We gratefully acknowledge the men and women in the Navy, Army and Air Force who made the supreme sacrifice in the preservation of Australia, freedom and democracy. We also proclaim our gratitude to those who return to us. Welcome everybody and uh, welcome to the gallery and also to those uh, members of the community who are listening at, listening at home. Um, we do have several apologies. There's a nasty flu going around. We have an apology from Councillor Schofield and Councillor Hales um, and also an apology from Councillor Mann. Um, before we start, I'd just like to um, thank very much the, all the volunteers in Victor Harbour who assisted with the Schoolies Festival. We've just finished another three days of a really successful festival. Um, and a number of people talked about how nice it was to see the streets filled with happy, laughing young people. So that was great. Um, and I'd also like to publicly thank our CFS volunteers and all of the people that um, attended the recent fires um, um, down in Edithburg and in Yorktown um, and thank them very much for um, the work that they do volunteering during a very um, dangerous and um, horrible time. Um, there are no reports for council decisions. Um, I do need to remind councillors um, that are here of the obligations under the conflict of interest provisions, um, which you should all be pr um, familiar with. Excuse me, Mayor. May I ask you a question about the schoolies? Were, were, were numbers down? Uh, I understand they were down this year. Um, I haven't heard that they are down. I heard that they were around about the same. Yep. Um, Item five, minutes of the previous meeting, and the recommendation is that the minutes of the ordinary meeting, um, which was on the 28th of October, be confirmed as true and accurate. Do I have someone to move that way? Councillor Robertson and Councillor Henderson to second that. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Councillor Kemp? Uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Um, on questions, I notice from Councillor Charles, uh, agenda item 18.2, question two. There's a statement in there. I just want to follow up if Council has acted on that statement that Council will communicate with the groups within Karagalinga House uh, about the car park. I'm just wondering if that's happened because there's no actual resolu sorry, there's no resolution to actually carry that action out. Just wondering if the Council has contacted the residents of the Karagalinga House. I'll ask um, Director Pathouse if he can respond to that for you, Councillor Kemp. Yeah, through, through the Mayor, off the top of my head, sorry, Councillor Kemp, I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to check with the staff that are actually looking after that at the moment. I know there's been ongoing discussions, though, with the various parties associated with that particular project. Um, to what extent with the actual users of Karagalinga House, I'm, I'm not too sure off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, can I just, in relation to that, ask... Um, Director Pat us where we are up to in looking for increased um, parking for Karakalinga House, um, because that's something that we've been looking at for the last couple of months. And I know there are several several things that we were perhaps able to do. Yeah, sure. Um, the design work's been, or a level of design work's been completed, and we're just in the process of formalising or putting together an agreement with um, uh, with the Victor Central uh, Management. Uh, for the conversion, I think it's of nine spaces into uh, nine standard spaces in the permit zone into six uh, disabled or ambulatory um, spaces. So uh, we're hoping to bring that to the next council meeting in terms of formalisation and finalisation. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion about the minutes of the last council meeting? 
If not, I'll put that to the floor. Um, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. 5.2 of the minutes of the previous special council meeting um, and the recommendation is that those be confirmed as true and accurate. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Kemp, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Lilly. Do Does anybody want to speak to those minutes? If not, um, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, deputations. We have one deputation from Robert Carwood um, in relation to the Victor Harbour Beachside Market. Um, Robert, are you here? Yep, thank you. If um, perhaps, um, Councillor Charles, can you show uh, Mr Carwood where to sit? Thank you. Um, Robert, you have 10 minutes to make your deputation um, and then we can take a few questions from the elected members um, if they have any. Um, but please, um, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, welcome. Please, please sit down um, if you don't, don't need to stand. Thank you. All right. Thank, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for letting me have a few words about the Beachside Market, which used to be called the Country Market. As you can see from the papers that have been, uh, the financial papers that have been handed around to you, the market does not make much of a profit and the years 2010 to 2016 mainly ran at a loss. And was, um, the market was never designed to make huge profits. When Janet and her mother started the market in 1987, it was only to sell their craft items. <clears throat> for the last few years, the market has been paying the council over 13000 per, per year in rent. Currently, it's $446 per market, and we've got 13, 31 markets for this financial year, so the council should make $13,826 out of us. We'd like to continue to run the market for a few more years. When we applied last financial, financial year for another four years lease, we gave all the information that you all received via email from us to the council staff. You did not get it in your agenda. With much discussion with Michelle Griffith, we came up with a reduced rent of $300 per market. This was to enable us to hire people such as John Lamb, the ABC gardener expert, and also, also Rose the carpenter, to be at the market so people could ask for advice, help with their problems. Um, there will be other people we can think of as well that we'd use. This would bring more people into Victor and not only the market would benefit, but other traders in town also could benefit. The market also helps local service groups and charities with, three st with free stalls. We had two yesterday, the local cancer support group from Victor and an ice skating group of 12 girls who do figure dancing and are raising money to go to Poland in January 2020. That's to represent Australia at the World Finals. Uh, their next visit to the market will be December the 22nd. That's the market before Christmas. Jan and I also believe that less day visitors are coming to the market. We can see that by how often the paid car park is full, rarely now. Also, TV commentators suggesting to the public to avoid Victor over the last weekend. I don't think it's very good for Victor due to the schoolies. We think the council and tourist officers need to rectify this. To get more visitors to town, the tourist office need to go to a promotion program going. They also need to visit the tourist attractions as Janet and I have never seen one at the market, except the lady who runs the tourist office. Janet and I do what we can to promote the market by visiting other markets by word of mouth, employing the town crier to go around the town promoting not only the market but also welcoming visitors and giving them information to other places in town so other people in, or businesses in town get some benefit. The ABC Saturday mornings at 6.30am when you could talk about the market but they've changed the format and uh, unfortunately, we can only talk about the market when we have something special. 
We'd love to do more, but funds are limited. Hopefully you might consider changing the decision that was made in June with regards to the market's future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Carwood. Do any of the members have any questions for Mr. Carwood? Um, Brian? Thanks for your presentation there. Um, can you tell me, you have store numbers, have you seen a, a drop off in the, the numbers of storeholders that you've had in recent times or in, over the years? How's that fluctuated? Back in the, 50, in the 90s, we were probably getting up to around 50 in the height of the season. We still can get that. But down in the winter time, sort of June, July, August, we're down to say only 20. And that's because of the weather. Nothing we can do about it. It's just how the system works. So in the winter time, we're making a loss. In the summertime, we hopefully cover our costs. Councillor Robertson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, to, to you, Robert, and uh, Janet, who's also sitting at the back of the room. Yeah. Um, I regard what you do as amazing for this city. Uh, it's a real public service that you do uh, to us, for us. Um, unfortunately, it's never been measured what impact you have, but I'm sure it's there. And uh, I would like to see that um, market grow uh, beyond what it is. But uh, as it stands, it's uh, an amazing, um, it's not a business because you hardly make money out of it, um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing attraction to Victor Harbour. I enjoy going to it. I know lots of other people do as well. So from my point of view, I've read um, in detail, the uh, not the, what this sheet is here today, but the previous emails that you sent along with all the, the argument for your case as well as the data. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Can I make another comment, please? Sure. If we had a non, a site that was not affected by the weather as that we do currently have, we certainly would do better for the winter. That is something that we need to have a good look at and work something out. Mm. But as a summer uh, location, it is fantastic mm. where we are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coward, and I think that that um, is a really um, good point in terms of whether there's any other sites, and I know that that's been discussed um, in the past over over the years, and may be worth um, further discussion so that we can have a look at that. Um, and we, you know, if we're looking at the redevelopment of the main street, even looking at something like that um, as one possibility, there may be others. So um, certainly, we'll be in touch afterwards and can can further that discussion and see how we can can work um, both mutually beneficially for for that. Because I think as Councillor Robertson said, um, and Councillor Littley said, it's a fantastic market that does bring a lot of people to Victor Harbour. Councillor Littley. Um, Robert, can I, I want to give you the opportunity to say just how much it is you do, do and put into these markets. I see you mentioned the likes of attracting people like John Lamb and, and Rose the Carpenter, is that right? Yes. Um, to the markets. I mean, the, the value of that in bringing people, drawing people um, to an area and into our town is, is quite uh, substantial. Yourself and um, and Janet, how much time do you put into these markets across a week, a year, or give us a, a fortnight, whatever is a measurable amount for you, just so we can get an understanding of how much effort goes into this? There would be a couple of hours in the evening or during the day where we're talking to potential storeholders uh, because we have to suggest that they do have market insurance in case something goes wrong, like the table collapses and cracks poor little Johnny's head open, even though he was the one that caused the thing to happen. Um, yes, um, we get, I get phone calls during the day and you're perhaps driving the tractor and you, you know, like mowing hay or baling hay or something, and you've got to, or seeding and you've got to stop and then talk to people. So you lose five, 10 minutes here. It's very hard to say exactly how many hours. I know there's a couple of hours on a um, Saturday evening where I'm, booking everyone in onto my book so that when I get to the market, I know where to put all the new storeholders and what spaces are vacant and what spaces aren't. Um, and then I'm leaving home 
usually just before seven on a Sunday morning. And well, it was last night, it was seven o'clock before I got home. So there's a fair bit of outage there. Janet leaves home between around about quarter past, 20 past, and she doesn't get to the market until roughly nine because she's putting out day signs uh, around the town, uh, advising, you know, advertising that the market is on. And then of course, when I've got all our store, which is a plant stall packed up, we go around and take all those signs down and then we go home, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Charles. Thank you. Um, thanks again. Uh, glad you did the deputation. Uh, I recall you said uh, you made contribution to the path that goes through the Soldiers Memorial Gardens too when that was paved. A long time ago, back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. and um, I can't tell you how much money we did actually raise for that, mm -hmm. but um, that was one of the, well, that was in the day that when uh, Mayor Crompton was involved and he suggested it and I said, right, no trouble, we'll do that. And we did make a contribution that way. And there was me five or six hundred dollars that I definitely reckon that went into it. There's no doubt that you're exceedingly valuable. Uh, anybody that puts an effort in um, from the community should be supported by the council. I think we need to know though what it is that you require from here on in so that uh, we can put up some motions because that's how things get done here. Otherwise, it's a case of, oh, we'll get back to you and maybe maybe it just won't happen as quickly as, as it could do if we put up a motion or two. So uh, you might be able to tell us um, what your deputation's about now. We've been advised, but what exactly do you want to come from this? Can I just um, highlight with um, Councillor Charles what you said, Council's resolved to, um, we've got a year um, before there's going to be any changes. So there's no motions that need to go to the table right now. We've, we've got a year, it's not something we need to hurry. Um, but, and I'm certainly with some of the suggestions that um, Mr. Carwood's made, I think it will be worthwhile talk, going back and talking about a number of options rather than making a motion on the run now, um, which is probably not necessary. Well, can I comment? Sure, we have, we have run out of time, so I'll give you another two minutes and then we'll need to move on. The, the first thing I would like, or Janet and I would like, is the council to rescind their motion they made in June so that we have the right to carry on with the market at its cu uh, current location. The second one, we would like a reduction in rent so that we can get people in, such as John Lamb and other experts like that, to the market which then will bring a lot more people in. Basically, our rent level of where we are at $25 a store is round about the market limit. Yep. You go to Christie's Beach, car and trailer is $20. Yep. Um, if you've just got a car, it's about $12 mm -hmm. okay. per site. Um, so that's what I would like yep. to do, okay? And certainly we can discuss that as a council, but at the moment, it's you're continuing on the current the current path is continuing on as you are um, for until next until next year. To the end of um, June. So we'll so we'll have a look at that in the meantime. Thank you very very much for your deputation. I think that's really interesting and best of luck. Um, and you do some great work. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. For and thank you for coming too, Janet. Can I press anything here in the middle. Um, we now have questions from the gallery, and we have got one question from Mr. Blatchford. If you'd like to come forward, Mr. Blatchford. Take a seat. So the question that you sent me was, who orchestrated the refusal to investigate the second subdivision at lot 25 Stock Road? Um, and the response is that the current investigations with regard to Stock Road and the Crozier Estate Development are being undertaken by the Local Government uh, Mutual Liability Scheme. They're still doing that investigation and no one has refused to investigate um, any area of that land. So that, that investigation is still um, ongoing and has not been completed as yet. Um, so um, in response to your question, there hasn't been a refusal at all. It's an ongoing investigation. Um, Thank you. Just one comment, Your Worship. 
I've uh -huh. had a letter from the barristers and they have said they haven't investigated and they won't be investigating lot 25 because nobody has complained. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do not have any petitions. And so we move to um, item 10.1.1, which is the financial statements. The first recommendation is that council receive a note, the 2018-19 financial statements report. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Kemp and seconding Councillor Henderson. Does anyone want to speak to receiving and noting that report? No, in that case, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. The second recommendation is that council endorse the certification of the 2018-19 financial statements um, by the Mayor and Chief Executive Officer. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Robertson and seconded Councillor Kemp. Do either of you want to speak to that? Does anybody want to speak to it? In that case, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Recommendation three, that in accordance with section 127 of the Local Government Act and the Audit Committee's recommendation, the City of Victor Harbour General Purpose Financial Statements for the year ended 30th of June 2019 be endorsed by Council. Councillor Henderson moving that way and seconding that. Councillor Glasbrook, do either of you want to speak to it? Does anybody want to speak to it? If not, I'll put that to the motion to the floor. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Ten point one point two, which is the two thousand and nineteen twenty September budget review. Um, this is what was presented in the last audit committee. The first recommendation is that council receive a note, the 2019-20 September budget review. Can I have a mover for that? Councillor Henderson and someone to second that. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Do either of you want to speak to it? Does anyone want to speak to it? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. The second recommendation is that Council endorse the 2019-20 September Budget Review as recommended by the Audit Committee, presented in the uniform presentation of finances provided in Attachment A, detailing net capital expenditure um, and operating deficit. Um, would someone like to move that way? Councillor Robertson and seconded. Councillor Glasbrook, do either of you want to speak to that? Does anyone want to speak to it? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. The third recommendation is that Council acknowledge the Audit Committee's recommendation to take caution when approving new expenditure, whether it be capital or operating, and that Council carefully consider long-term sustainability implications of those decisions. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Glasbrook and seconded by Councillor Henderson. Do either of you want to speak to that? Councillor Glasbrook. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to reassure members on this one. This is uh, very important. And this came from one of our independent members on the audit committee. So I'm um, very qualified. Um, he's actually an auditor himself. Um, so I think we need to um, pay attention to it is what I'm trying to say. The other thing I wanted to just mention is um, we also need to be very, very cautious with capital expenditure. I know quite often um, it comes from the administration that capital doesn't affect our budget, which in sort of a way it does. In a way it doesn't, but in the, certainly in a very large way it does. And not necessarily in the figures for that year, but in the um, operating expenditure of the future. Obviously, if you borrow any money, it costs you interest and it, you, know, you have to pay it back. So every decision we make, whether it be in capital or operating, certainly affects our budget. And uh, we need to um, careful because we have a very, very limited budget and we have um, many, many things that we need. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glasbrook. Does anybody else want to speak to that? Councillor Robertson? Um, thank you, Mayor. <coughs> yes, I would like to speak to that, to this, because uh, it's important in many respects, um, following on from what Councillor Glasbrook has said, it's absolutely correct, is that um, we are, we are going ahead this year with um, 
with uh, capital expenditure uh, when we still don't have our ducks lined up, planning ducks, strategic ducks. The long-term financial plan, um, still we haven't dealt with that. And we know in reality that we have a number of seriously large uh, commitments that are probably likely, some of which are likely to come due in this financial year. The pain we have seen so far with the, the expansion of the um, budget deficit is not over. And we really need to take care of that. There was another observation in the audit from the independent um, auditor uh, this year about, um, about the, the council's um, taking on um, or biting off more than it can chew. Uh, not only in terms of borrowings, but in terms of its implementation capacity. The council has reached a point where the observation from the independent was that we have um, far too much accumulated leave uh, in the amongst the council staff. And this means that we need to tackle that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, accumulated leave, my understanding from advice this afternoon is that two ways to deal with that. One is to uh, have people uh, take leave, uh, which wouldn't be good in a year when we have an extremely ambitious um, uh, work plan, business plan. Um, the other way of dealing with it is to pay people out for their leave if they agree to that accumulated leave to reduce that overburden, but one way or another, um, we, we need to address this issue because projects that go into the council's um, business plan and are not done, and we've been falling behind for the past three years. We're actually putting more capital projects into our business plan than is being completed. And we got through to a level last year of 1.7 million of uh, it's not as bad as it sounds because there, some of that is over larger projects which we're taking on, which do spread out over one year. But the trend is there, that we are not getting done what we say in the business plan. Then at the same time, if we have to address the issue of staff uh, leave accrual and the liabilities that we have there, then that's, and that will be mainly Murphy's Law says that that mainly impacts on people who are the most valuable or the most critical to implementation of work um, business plans. So, yeah, we, we really do need to take care that we do everything we can to, to limit the, um, the, what we put on the plate for this year. And uh, we've got stuff coming up later in the agenda where I'll comment on that again, but um, I'm particularly concerned also that we seem to be falling behind. Uh, as an aside to that, um, the monthly financial uh, statement of budget um, versus um, cumulative expenditure, um, this is for the first four months of this year, uh, showed us um, two thirds of the way through the financial year, uh, sorry, one third of the way through the financial year, but only one quarter, one quarter of our budget um, expended. Now, there's always a lag in these issues, but again, it looks as though we're heading to a um, situation where we're not going to be completing the projects that we say we've got on the books now, we've got more coming. Mm. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Robertson. Does anybody else want to say anything? Councillor Kemp. Yeah, I just want to echo um, Councillor Glazerbrook and uh, Councillor Robinson's position as members of the audit committee as myself. And it was surprising to hear the independent members talk about, you know, sustainability, talks about um, prioritising projects, really about how you set your budgets and make sure you work within your capacity and capability. So. I guess uh, we're coming up into our new financial budget deliberations. So I guess it's a, heating, a good warning now from the audit committee to 
when we look at what we're going to be spending in the next financial year or the next five years, um, we need to be a bit more prudent and um, really look at exactly what we're going to be delivering. Councillor Kemp, does anybody else want to say anything? Councillor Glasbrook, do you want to close the debate? No. Um, if not, um, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour of that recommendation? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Can I ask a question, Mayor? Uh, if it's about the budget review? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the minutes will reflect the motion and the um, that was unanimously passed. And who moved it and seconded it? Yep. We now go to item 10.3, appointment of the Deputy Mayor. Um, the first thing I would do would move, ask that the recommendation that Council receive and note the report on the Deputy Mayor position um, be um, be moved and received. Um, and then I'll call for a suspension of meeting procedures and ask elected members for a show of hands to seek leave of the meeting. Um, and then I will call for nominations um, out of um, formal meeting procedures. Um, all those people who nominate are able to participate in the ballot. However, um, when the name of the person who is successful in winning the ballot um, is put to the chamber for endorsement, then um, they may want to consider the conflict of interest provisions at that point in time. Um, but the first recommendation is that the council receive and note the report on the deputy mayor position. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Littley, thank you. And Councillor Robertson to second that. Does there, is there any discussion on that report? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Um, I'd like to, um, to now ask elected members if we can um, have a suspension of meeting procedures. Um, are you all happy for that? So there's more than two thirds majority happy for suspension of meeting procedures. Um, so we'll go out of meeting procedures from now. Um, and I'll call for any nominations for Deputy Mayor. Councillor Littley. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Henderson. Do you accept that nomination, Councillor Henderson? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations, Councillor Kemp? Um, I'll nominate myself for a position of Deputy Mayor. Yep. Sure. Are there any other nominations? Councillor Charles? At what time can I make a comment? rather than the nomination? Uh, when we're, uh, I'd rather get the nominations out, out of the way and then you may, you may make a comment depending on what the comment is, if it's relevant. Any other nominations? No, if we only have two nominations. Um, then what I'll do is ask um, if that the Chief Executive Officer be appointed the Returning Officer um, and for the election of Deputy Mayor and then on completion of the election be authorised to declare the successful candidate. Oh, I beg your pardon, we need to resume meeting procedures to go back into that, so people happy to go back into meeting procedures? Yep, thank you. We've got more than two thirds. Um, so the recommendation is that the Chief Executive Officer be appointed Returning Officer. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Charles and Councillor Robertson seconding it. Councillor Charles, you might want to make your point now if it's relevant to... Thank you. I will. Uh, I trust that this Council will vote for a Deputy Member who is not wanting the position for status and for the additional uh, addition to their resume. This council needs to be mindful that the member should be committed councillor who has demonstrated integrity and put in extra effort over the above monthly meetings, workshops and informal gatherings. The only reason why I say that is it seems we elect people quite often because they they appear to be friends or something like that. And quite frankly, it annoys me that people who are qualified for the positions that I've seen in this council generally don't get a look in. Thank you, Councillor Charles. Um, did we have someone? To, oh, Councillor Robertson seconded that. 
with the leave of the meeting, what I might do is ask, um, and since we I was going to ask if um, Councillor Kemp and Councillor Henderson wanted to speak uh, prior to putting it to the vote. Oh, yes. Councillor Littley. I, I would suggest we have two nominations and both fit the criteria that you've um, said, Councillor Charles, so that's really good. So you must be pleased with that, I'm sure. This isn't a forum for debate, sorry. Um, but I would ask if Councillor Kemp and Councillor Henderson would like to would like to speak to their nominations. Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, point of order. I believe that uh, both these people have a conflict of interest um, at this point of time because they're spruiking what uh, what they can and can't do. Uh, and if they've got a point, if they've got a conflict of interest after being elected, uh, they've certainly got one now. That's my opinion. Can I have that clarified, please? Uh, certainly, at this point in time, um, they can participate in the ballot and they can speak um, to the ballot. Um, it's not until the person is appointed as deputy mayor, um, where there is a position and there's also remuneration in relation to that position, that they may wish to declare a conflict of interest. But at this point in time, um, as they are nominees, um, they can speak to, to that. Thank you. So I don't accept your point of order. There's no point of order. Um, Councillor Henderson, continue. Thank you. Whilst I've only been on council for 12 months, um, I have gained an awful lot of experience in that 12 month period. I do chair three of the section 41 committees. So I've become very familiar with the procedures of, um, of meetings. And um, I think by um, re member reports that I've sent forward to um, council um, ordinary meetings um, over that 12 month period speaks for, its, for themselves in terms of my community involvement and the things I've been involved with through and on behalf of council. Um, I've also stepped in for the mayor on a couple of occasions as well and um, tomorrow as the chair of the uh, Community Services Committee, I'm emceeing um, a, an afternoon forum where all of the community um, people on that committee are presenting the work that they, they do for that committee. So um, I think I'm reasonably qualified for the position of Deputy Mayor. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor Kemp. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. My background is that as an executive in the Metropolitan Fire Service where I've stood into higher rank positions. I've chaired a lot of interstate national committees uh, in that process. Yes, I'm a 12 month um, employee, uh, sorry, um, elected member. And yes, I don't sit on some of the committees, uh, section 41s, but I do sit on some strategic committees, so audit committee. I do represent the council on uh, a couple of the boards uh, as well. So I do have a good understanding of meeting procedures. I do, and I have represented the mayor on a couple of occasions doing her radio spots to uh, gain more experience and knowledge in this area. And I think with my background and the 12 months of learning curve that's been quite steep for all of us, that we've, um, I think I have the opportunity and the, the actual skills and knowledge to actually to carry out the duties of deputy mayor and support the dep and to support the mayor in her role. And that's what I see the role of deputy mayor is to be doing, and I believe I can do that. And I've done that on many occasions throughout my career. Thank you. Does anybody else want to speak to um, that motion before we put it to the before we? Um, um, before we hand out the ballots, just need to check something with the CEO.
Okay, I beg your pardon. So now we just vote on um, recommendation two in order for the um, CEO to undertake the ballot. So all those in favour? Those against? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Um, I'll let the CEO undertake the ballot. Through the Mayor, thank you. Um, so you have two nominations. You've received Councillor Henderson and Councillor Kemp. Karina will hand out a ballot paper to you and I ask that you clearly mark one name on that ballot paper for your preferred candidate. Thank you. Thank you. I've received seven ballot papers in return. One of those was invalid. So I have a tie and I will then draw those names from a hat as per our policy. And the last name to be drawn will be the name of the position. Candidate to be nominated for decision. First name to be drawn is Councillor Kemp. The last name to be drawn is Councillor Henderson. So the name to be nominated, I believe, just double checking our policy. The nomination being put forward is Councillor Henderson. The third recommendation um, is that Council appoint Councillor Henderson. Councillor Henderson? I perceive conflict of interest. Material, Material conflict of interest, sorry. And I'll leave the chamber. Thank you. The recommendation is that Council appoint Councillor Henderson to the position of Deputy Mayor for a period of 12 months, commencing from the 26th of November and concluding at the Ordinary Council meeting on the 23rd of November 2020. Do I have a mover for that? Thank you very much, Councillor Kemp, and seconded by Councillor Littley. Is there any discussion? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Councillor Henderson, I'd like to congratulate you that you've been um, voted unanimously to be Deputy Mayor for the next 12 months. I'd like to thank Councillor Kemp for your nomination and um, I've, over this time um, I look forward to you being able to help me um, just as you have over the last 12 months. Thank you very much. And I would also like to give a really big thank you to Councillor Glasbrook, who has been um, a very big help to me and a big support over the first 12 months of Council um, as Deputy Mayor. Um, thank you very much um, on behalf of the Council, Councillor Glasbrook. It's been fantastic having you. 
on board. Um, so we'll now move on. So item 10.3.2, elected member allowance support policy and legal advice procedure. The first recommendation is that council receive a note, the elected member allowance and support policy report. Uh, would someone like to move that way? Councillor Henderson and seconded by Councillor Robertson. Do either of you want to speak to that? Anyone want to speak to receiving and noting that report? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. The second recommendation is that Council adopt the amendments to the elected member allowance and support policy as provided at attachment B to this report. Do I have someone to move that way? Councillor Henderson and seconded by Councillor Robertson. Does anybody want to speak to that? Councillor Robertson. Um, just on a note, Mayor, um, I read uh, this stuff and um, yeah, I congratulate the CEO and the staff on a you know, fine body of work. Thank you. If nobody else wants to speak, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Recommendation three, that council adopt the council member legal advice procedure provided at attachment C to this report. Does someone like to move that way? Councillor Kemp and Councillor Robertson seconding that. Either of you want to speak to it? Councillor Kemp. Yes, I'd like to um, move a variation to the administrative procedure. Um, Section 3, Operating Procedure 3.4. The reason why I want to do a variation to it, and my variation would be um, that any legal advice sought by the Chief Executive Officer on behalf of the Council members is subject to Council procurement policy in consultation with the elected member. Um, this is about elected members getting their opportunity to seek some type of expertise and advice in matters of their duties. And I think that um, by having the consultation with the elected member in the discussion would go a long way in sorting out the, the process. And 3.4.1, which of council legal firms will manage the advice, I believe I'd like to see that deleted. The reason why I think that going to the council legal firm under the procurement policy is must be the way it should go to a degree. But what I'm thinking is that um, if council um, administration gets one council um, lawyers for them to do one bit of advice, we then seek uh, clarity on that advice. They go back to another lawyers that are used by the council on a regular basis. So these um, members or these lawyer firms are really employed by the council on a regular basis in some format or some way or other. I think we should be able to actually find a legal firm or lawyer who has the knowledge and the local, of the Local Government Act 1999 so they can provide the right advice for us within the um, framework. And under the procurement policy, we can do that because there's uh, certain provisions where we could look at purchase orders, direct purchasing, and um, we don't need to have pre-qualification or contractors unless we do go down that path and have a set of lawyers or people who could be on a pre-prescribed uh, contract, you know, just for the elected members only. So I just think us locking us into the council elected um, lawyers is mostly a little bit faulty in my respect, because I'm not quite sure if I'd be comfortable enough to get the right decision or the right opinion from the council staff um, lawyers they use on a regular basis. So that's why I like to move in a variation okay. to actually to add in, in consultation with the elected member and delete 3.4.1. Might ask the CO to respond to that, um, Councillor Kemp. I guess I have on a number of occasions just clarified that they aren't the administration's lawyers, they are the council's as an entity. So um, they would still need to, I'm happy for that, provision to be removed, still be in accordance with Council's procurement policy, but still be required to have a pre-qualification check that Council can actually deal business with them. But they're actually Council's lawyers as an entity, not the administration's. So, Councillor Robertson, are you happy for that variation? 
take out 3.4.1 and what were you doing to 3.4, Councillor Kemp? That the CEO would uh, include in consultation with the elected member on the process about how they go about getting that lawyer's firm or that process in doing it. So add um, the sentence in consultation with the elected member. Elected member. Yep. Just, just add that at the beginning and to take out 3.4.1. Yes. Are you happy with that variation, Councillor uh, Robertson? Yes, ma'am. Yep. yep. Okay. I'll just let um, Karina catch up. It's the following variation, um, Karina, rather than amendment. Is everybody clear on that variation? Questions? Does anybody else want to speak to it? Councillor um, Glasbrook and then Councillor Charles. Uh, yes, thank you. Just a comment, uh, but I'm glad that this has been limited to $2,000 um, per member per year because uh, it will have an effect on our budget as everything does. The next year when we're squabbling over what to cut out of the budget, it would be another $20,000 that will be locked away and um, it's not spent at the end of that year, it'll disappear into that little place where all that money disappears to. So um, it does have a bu budget implication. Thank you, Councillor Glasbrook. Councillor Charles? Yeah, it's, um, it's a pity it's only $2,000 because um, I think that's possibly just one consultation with some lawyers. Uh, it, it's a pity that it's necessary at all. But, um, you know, as councillors uh, on this very small amount of money we get just to sort of keep us uh, uh, in photocopying paper and fuel, I guess, it certainly doesn't pay for the time that we put in or that many of us put in. And there are times when we need to do some independent research. And so I think probably the only way to... Um, to feel, I, this is not how I'm going to feel confident, that's for sure. When I want to check on what administration are up to or whatever's going on, that may seem wrong, but the public want us to be making sure that we are, in actual fact, watching watching all, all aspects of the business, not just the, the finance and what have you. We're keeping an eye on their, on their money and, and, and what's being done in the town. And I guess I started off in council um, at a very difficult time when um, there was a lot going on. Uh, things have improved immensely, but the last thing I want to be doing is speaking to one of the councillors or council's lawyers um, about something that I find concerning. So I'll continue to get my own advice and um, sometimes pay for it. Does anybody else want to speak to this motion? Not I'll put it to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. We now move to 10.3.3, Council Policies, Informal Gathering, Council Member Access to Information and Flag Management. The first recommendation is that Council receive a note, the Council Policies Report. 
Moved by Councillor Henderson. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Littley, thank you. Um, anyone want to speak to that? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. The second recommendation is that Council adopt the amendments to the informal gathering policy provided at attachment A to the report. Do I have someone to move that way? Councillor Henderson and Councillor Robertson. Do either of you want to speak to that? Does anyone want to speak to that? Councillor Henderson, you want to speak to it? Uh, just a note on um, point 6.4.4. Point um, I think the wording needs to be slightly changed. Um, there is a reference there, the CEO at his discretion. I think it should be his stroke, her or their discretion. Um, do you want to comment? Um, yes, happy to change that. I think it should be there, depending on you could have there. a male or a female. Yes. Um, I'd also like to just make a change to uh, following a discussion I had with um, Councillor Glasbrook today. I don't think paragraph six point, or clause 6.3.3 .3 at the top of page 88 of your agenda is necessary. It's a duplication in terms of we reference the other informal gatherings at point uh, 6.7.3. So I don't think, that, I'm not sure as to why that additional one was added in. I don't think it's necessary. It doesn't take away from the policy. It's just a duplication and is not relevant where it's sitting currently. I did discuss that with Kelly and Knight Stacey prior to coming into the meeting. Thank you. Is there anything else, Councillor Henderson? No? Councillor Robertson? Uh, yeah, I've just found my notes. Um, I did have one one item, 6.4.9, which is on your page 87, bottom. Um, Council administration may record an informal gathering or discussion. Um, I think this should be, the may should be will. What was that page number again? Um, I think it's, uh, oh, hang on, 88. And what was the item number? At the bottom, 6.4.9. Oh, council administration may recall and inf may record. May record. I think they should. Some informal gatherings or discussions may be held at places like the boat ramp or places where it's difficult to record. Um, so I think that that may um, actually takes into account. Sorry, Council Glassbrook. Um, um, that may will take into account where the informal gathering or discussion is being held and the type of informal gathering and discussion. Um, I'll, I'll let um, our CEO expand on that, but I could see that it, there may be places where it is impractical to record, record it um, depending on what it is. Um, through the Mayor, we also, as part of our code of practice meeting procedures, we do have a requirement where uh, our designated informal gatherings um, and those council and committee meetings are recorded or and or filmed um, and this applies but if it's an other informal gathering for example it's um, a training session or you're having a presentation from a third party we are not always able to record so that's why it says maybe because it does depend if it's a designated informal gathering then they are usually recorded or and or filmed because they're open to the public yeah um I appreciate what you and the mayor have said. Um, maybe we could in there um, put in something like uh, um, uh, where, where appropriate or something like that. But the way it reads that uh, council administration may record, uh, that to me is that um, less than 50% is going to be recorded. I, I think we need to. So would you like uh, the words um, where appropriate to be put on the end? Yeah. Yep. Okay, you can can you do that, Victoria? Or oh, where will record, not may. May I interrupt? Where possible, I think is better than where appropriate. Where possible? I'm happy to take direction from the members, Council Littley. <laughs> Um, I think even if 
I think may record where possible probably probably fits the, a number of different scenarios. Otherwise, we're going to end up with six different scenarios. Um, Councillor Charles. It should simply say, will record where possible, where, human, where the, where the um, equipment is. If there's no equipment there, you're on the boat ramp having a chat, well then obviously it's not possible, but otherwise it is possible and it should be recorded because things, as we said in a meeting that some councillors missed out on, was that uh, there are occasions when we may want to refer back to a confidential matter. Um, for um, for guidance, for, for legal matters, for, for whatever reason, we want to look at it and it will eventually one day come out of um, out of confidence. That was Councillor Glasbrook who put that up okay. at the time. So will is the word, if, so if like I may. Will rather than may, yeah, will. may record, will record where possible. Yep, you've got that. Okay, beautiful. Um, so we had the motion, um, Councillor Henderson, um, and Councillor Robertson seconded it. Does anybody else want to speak to it? Councillor Glasbrook? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, thank you, CEO, for removing that um, duplication. I still have concerns with the fact that the um, all, um, all informal gatherings or discussions of the Council will not be open to the public is what it says in this policy and um, this is not the designated this is just the ordinary or informal gatherings I still have concerns with that I'm, I'm a little bit concerned lately that a lot of our meetings particularly our um, new working group meetings have been closed to the public and I'm not 100% sure as to why um, I'm a little bit concerned that you know we're closing the door to our community and I, I think that that would be very disappointing um, because you know we we need to encourage our community to get involved and come along and be involved if, if, they, if they decide to and for us to consistently have things closed to the public um, I think is bad and um, it's not a good environment for us to put in place for us to work with our community so I think that the the policy for an informal gathering as well as a designated informal gathering that should be open to the public unless the CEO requires that it not be mm. rather than it automatically be closed. So that's I my think opinion. Councillor Glasswood you'd find that it's automatically opened unless there's um, specific reasons such as training or strategic planning um, or it's you know uh, we're having people coming in and talking to us that that need it to be closed so to say that it's automatically closed I'm not sure that that's that's correct um, and we have got procedures in relation to informal gatherings and other gatherings but I will let the CEO well, just, expand just on that point of order um, on page 90 of your agenda. So what's your point of order? At, um, what's your point of order, Councillor Well, Glasbrook? my point of order is that you're overruling what I'm trying to say. And I, no, Councillor Glasbrook, I don't accept your point of order. Well, my role it clearly as says the, here it will not be open. So what my, you just stated is incorrect. So I wish but, to point what your, your statement was incorrect. That's my point of order. I'll let the CEO respond to that. Um, because I've, my role here is to make sure that everybody has got the correct information so that you can and vote correctly. the information that I'm talking correctly. about is written in black and white on this yep. I'll, As I said, I'll let the CEO respond to that. Um, and um, my role is to make sure that everybody has the correct information. So we'll let, we'll let um, Victoria McCurdy respond to um, some of the things that you said, which may not be um, quite correct. Through the Mayor, um, I should be referring to the clause number, which is 6.7, which begins on page 89, and that's headed other informal gatherings and discussions. And other informal gatherings and discussions are matters that fall outside of those prescribed in the regulations as designated. So all designated informal gatherings are open to the public unless otherwise specified. And there's such gatherings, and it's detailed in here specifically what they are, which is a training and educational session exchange of information on proposals that are being worked on by staff or ideas that need to be investigated, including options for engaging the community, building trust and understanding through informal communications, that's a team building session, or uh, receiving information from third parties. Those would be automatically closed unless the CEO describes that they don't necessarily need to be. But all other informal gatherings, as in, sorry, all designated informal gatherings, as stated, are open to the public 
with the exception of special circumstances. So that has not changed. That has been the current practice of this council for all of its um, procedures. And most of the working parties and advisory groups or um, and even the committees of council obviously are dealing with designated informal gatherings um, because that information will generally be coming back to the chamber. Well, thank you. And if that's the case, why is the wording um, in 6.7.3 that um, the discussions will not be open to the public? So they should be that they are open to the public it's other than the reasons just, that you've just stated. What, that's, my, that's my whole point. Yeah. Councillor Glasbrook, if you look at that 6.3, um, it says a council committee which is not a designated gathering. And then if you go back to 6.7, um, this is the other informing, informal gatherings, um, which are those that fall outside of those that are prescribed in the, in the regulations. So I'll they're the ones that. That, that are specific list, specifically listed, that the CEO listed, training, education, exchange of information on proposals that are being worked on by staff, um, informal communications, social gatherings, and receiving information from third parties. So that's... So why that, can't the com community come to some of those things, exchanging information? The, you're, you're suggesting that everything that's not a designated informal gathering should be private. I don't agree with that. Can I just add a little bit further through the Mayor, if I may? So a designated informal gathering, I must give the community notification of those. So it must be on our website. If it's opened or closed, must be on our website. If it's closed, I must give the reasons as to why it's closed and the purposes. So that's pub there's a process detailed with this in this procedure or policy Correct. as to how designated informal gatherings are held and notification. Where other informal gatherings they can actually be held and there's no notification to the community. For example, if um, the members have a weekend uh, strategic session and you're doing team building and there's a training and there's uh, other time that you're spent together, we don't give public notification of that. It's not a designated, it's referred to as other. If you're having a training session um, when we held your induction training, we didn't provide any public notification of that because it was for the purposes of training. So that notice only comes to the members because it's other. There's a distinct difference between designated and other. And I can understand your points, but I say the policy is as it has been for some time. I Thank that you, no Councillor Glasbrook. Councillor Charles. Uh, just a question for the uh, CEO through you. Uh, this is coming from section 90, uh, part eight, is it, of the, of the act? Yeah, okay, thank you. Councillor Robertson. Yeah, question to the CEO. 6.7.3 uh, to me is clumsy. I don't know why the council is involved because it says here that um, that should be the CEO which is being crossed out because being determined by council means that informal gatherings that you might have uh, in any given month, you can't have them till a month later because the council only meets once a month. This thing here is saying that, that the committee, which is not a designated gathering or discussion, will not be open to the public unless determined by the council. That's what we're voting on. Or CEO. Or CEO. It's just I've been oh, abbreviated yes. as CEO rather than Chief Executive Officer. Yeah, but in my version, oh, I see. The, um, yeah, the CEO has been rubbed out, yeah, yeah, because really council can't determine this sort of thing because we only meet once a month and anything that comes up isn't going to be activated until two months later. I don't know why council is even included there, but I, I support what uh, Councillor Glasbrook is saying. You know, all our um, ratepayers are over 21 years of age. I don't really... So I know this um, you know, strategic and planning stuff and everything, but surely to goodness they should be involved if they're interested. There's things like DIPTI are giving us a, um, a, a briefing next week. Um, they don't want, they're coming in and giving us a briefing, but they want it to be a, um, a closed briefing. Um, so you know there are times with these other informal gatherings um, when there's exchanges of information 
um, or if we're having training on particular issues where you may want to have a closed, closed briefing. So this provides that opportunity um, for that, but everything else is open to the public and I absolutely believe um, that everything should be open to the public as far as we can do it. But there are times that we do need to um, have what is specified, training, exchange of information, um, receiving information from third parties that, uh, that are closed at times. Councillor Kemp, you wanted to say something? Yes, uh, I agree that you know, there are times when you know, these um, other informal gatherings has to be closed. But it appears to me that um, certain advisory groups are used in this quite regularly to close off the public from coming to listen to what the advisory groups are discussing. And that's the information I'm getting from the community that, you know, why are these always closed? There are only advisory groups, yet, yet they're always closed. Maybe once or twice, maybe here and there, you know, but constantly. And I think the heritage is one, the arts and culture is another one, constantly always closed. And you know, the community doesn't know what's going on. Mm. You talk about being a visionary council, you're talking about mm. involving the, the community into all these things and, and get uh, traction mm. for an arts and culture precinct, yet mm. what are the arts and culture advisory groups doing is closing off to the community. Mm. So it just and, really concerns yeah. me that is too common. Yeah. And I think one of the things that that brings up, Councillor Kemp, is that, for example, if we use the arts and culture group as an example, they need to communicate perhaps better why they are closed, because I know they have been closed on a couple of occasions when they've been assessing applications um, for people to put things into the art, um, you know, the Coral Arts Street. Um, and so obviously if you're assessing pieces of art and, um, you know, assessing commercial things, you may want to have that closed. Um, so I think that communication is a really important thing. Councillor Henderson. If I may speak on that, yes, there are sometimes in the in the arts and culture adv advisory group where artists may be presenting their concept ideas for something. Now, there are obvious reasons why they wouldn't want that to be public, because you know it may may be a competitive edge. <laughs> so, uh, there are obvious reasons there until something is formalised. You know, people don't want their ideas stolen. Especially when they're really, yeah, you know, really interesting ideas. Um, Councillor uh, uh, Victoria McCurdy, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, just in response, I guess in terms of Councillor Kemp's questions, I did have a query from the Community Action Group because they had published in their newsletter that the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee had been holding all of its meetings closed, and there was concern from uh, that group that they were dealing with the arts and cultural precinct and the big project of the council, which I did write back to them and clarified that the only reasons that that group had been closed was to consider um, artists' um, work for the mural and also artists' work for um, going into choral arts space. That group has not done any work whatsoever on the arts and cultural precinct that has sat within council. And yes, that has been closed at this current time. And I explained that to the group and explained that where possible, I will ensure that further explanation is provided because they were thankful for the explanation I provided and just said if that information, more detail was provided, they would feel more comfortable as to why sessions needed to be closed. And I've followed that through with information to the senior management team and all, all staff that actually deal with calling those meetings and when they're requesting for me to actually have them to be closed, I need to have a real justification as to why. And so I am constantly scrutinising scrutinizing staff. If they're seeking for something to be closed, I want to know why. So it's not something I do lightly because I am very, very aware of this council's desire to be as open and transparent as possible. And I only use it when I need to. Thank you. Um, does anybody else want to speak? Otherwise, I will put this um, recommendation two to the vote. No, we are on recommendation two, aren't we? We've moved. Um, CEO McCurdy's just asked whether or not, actually, do you want to just ask the, I'll let you say it rather than me. It's all right. Just in relation to the motion is that council adopt the um, amendments to the informal gathering policy, but you've made some additional amendments to item 6.4.9. Um, would you like me de to detail them specifically in the resolution? 
or are you happy with, with amendments? Okay. Do you tell them? Okay, just give me two seconds and I will do that. Council will. Are you happy with that, Count, uh, Councillor Henderson? As we're detailing the ch changes, we may as well detail the changes in 6.4.4 as well. So I've done a catch-all, so any reference to his, I've done there. You've done that. Good. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll put recommendation two to the vote. I think we've had quite a lot of discussion about that. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Oh, hang on, sorry, beg your pardon. Those against? That's carried, thank you. Recommendation three, that council adopt the amendments to the council member access to information policy provided at attachment B to this report. Would someone like to move that way, please? Councillor Henderson and Councillor Robertson. Do either of you want to speak to that? No, does anyone want to speak to that? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. And recommendation four, that council adopt the amendments to the flag management policy provided at attachment C to the report. Councillor Henderson, Councillor Robertson, again, um, anyone want to speak to that? Just a comment, Mayor. Um, under 6.2.1, I believe, the, there is a list of flags that we that we fly. Um, my question is really, um, given that we flew the NADOC flag this year, should that be added to that list? Because further down it says that uh, they are the flags that will be flown at the Civic Centre um, unless stated otherwise in this policy. That's under 6.8.1. So 6.8.1 says at the Civic Centre Council will raise on each weekday the council is open the Australian national flag, the Aboriginal flag or the Torres Strait Islander flag and the City of Victor Harbour flag unless stated otherwise in this policy. But we have flown the NADOC flag and I presume we will in the future so should that be included? Um, through the Mayor, in terms of the italic paragraph, it says no other national or state flags may also be raised on occasion at the discretion of the CEO and with regard to the direction of the government protocol officers. So if we're actually directed or guided by one of those officers and the NADOC flag would fall into that category, then we will fly it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Uh, we up to 10.3.4, the Victor Harbour Oval Planning Group, terms of reference. The first recommendation is that council receive a note, the Victor Harbour Oval Planning Group terms of reference report. Does someone like to move that way? Councillor Littley. And seconded by Councillor Glasbrook. Either of you want to speak to the report? Anyone want to speak? Not all those in favour of receiving the report? 
Sorry, all those in favour of receiving the report? Those against? That's carried, thank you. The second recommendation is the Chief Executive Officer be appointed Returning Officer for the election of Chairperson and a Council Member, and on that completion of that election be authorised to declare the successful candidate for the positions of Chairperson and Council Member to the Victor Harbour Planning Oval Group. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Henderson and Councillor Robertson. Any discussion? All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Um, I'd like to um, suspend meeting procedures so that we can um, go to the ballot. Um, I need a show of hands for suspension of meeting procedures. At the point of order, Mayor Jenkins, if you may. Mm -hmm. uh, first recommendation, I didn't pick up on it straight away, but uh, we're not, the recommendation doesn't endorse the terms of reference. So the terms of reference can't be valid because we haven't endorsed them. All we've done is just note and receive them. So if you want to hold a, um, a Victor Harbour planning group where the terms of reference, it has to be endorsed and it hasn't been. I'll so, ask the um, CEO to respond to that. Um, so item one is actually just receive, receiving the report. So yes, you are correct. The council resolved at a previous meeting that it would form the uh, Oval planning group. Um, and those terms of reference would be fine-tuned with input from those working groups. So the council is seeking its elected member rep representation on that group and then endorsing the terms of reference. You may want to endorse your terms of reference first and then call for your nominations if you wish. Uh, if my memory serves me correct, Mayor. Um, Chief Executive Officer, my understanding of the, the motion, the amendment that uh, Councillor Mann made was to um, bring back to here for the terms of reference, not so much endorsing the planning working group, because I didn't think, under my impression, that was endorsed by this chamber, because it's all relied on the terms of reference and what the terms of reference look like as to whether this planning group goes ahead or not. That's my understanding. Through you, the Mayor, if I draw you to page 105, that council established the Victor Hub Oval Planning Group and endorsed the following membership and that seek um, feedback from the planning group membership on the draft terms of reference. Does that clarify your, your query? Uh, yes, Kip? thank you very much for okay. that. Okay, so can we just um, move again? Um, you're happy for me to suspend meeting procedures? All those in favour of suspending meeting procedures? Can you put your hands up, please? Because it's really difficult. Thank you very much, all of you. Yep, that's Thank you. Um, now, I'll call for nominations. I know that Councillor Schofield, um, who's unable to be here tonight, um, was interested in nominating to the position of council member. Um, oh, no, sorry, for the position of chairperson. I beg your pardon. Um, so I know that we've had one nomination from Councillor Schofield. Do are there any, anyone else wants to nominate for position of chairperson? Can I nominate David uh, Kemp or Councillor Kemp, please? Councillor Kemp, do you accept that nomination? No. I wish someone else would nominate because I believe that um, Councillor Schofield is overloaded now and is missing so many meetings because of her health. Um, Can I one? nominate Councillor Charles? I'm not looking for the glory, but I'll be happy to be the second, but not the chairman. Thank you. So we've got one nomination for the position of chair for this. Um, if there's no other nominations, um, I'll leave it to the C CEO to declare that. Um, through the mayor, if there's only one nomination, there's no reason to have a ballot. So that name would be coming forward for the decision of the chamber. I'd be seeking nominations for the elected member representative now. Okay. Do we have nominations for the elected member representative? You're happy to do that, Councillor Charles? Yep. My, I, I went to the club this afternoon and all the problems that there has been with the uh, misunderstandings and very poor communication um, with the uh, cricket club, uh, I won't say from what direction, have been overcome now. And um, 
that is a very, very happy and positive place. Uh, the Victor Harbour Football Club and the RSL have really made the, uh, the cricket club welcome. They're going to take them under their arm and hopefully create a, a, a real positive environment down there and, and add to their numbers over the next year or so. Maybe I shouldn't be you looking toward the CEO to say, should he be speaking about this? I don't know. You're not concentrating me, are you, Mayor? So, mm -hmm. so there's also a donation coming up of a lawn cutting uh, machine, which has four metres wide, which the club has bought. That is the, uh, the Ruse Club, and they'll be no donating it to the council, which will cut more than in half the cutting of the oval at present moment and leave it in better condition. This has been an absolutely fabulous in investment uh, of, from our community. And we're all going to be very proud of it for all the facilities that, uh, that they're going to have there. And I think we're just, uh, I, like, I have a question and the question is, when will this uh, car park be sealed? That's on this year's budget. I guess it will be happening this month, I believe. Uh, Dece no, next month, the December it starts. Through the Mayor, the contract has been awarded and we're just going through the um, documentations like bank guarantees and that before possession of site is given. That's wonderful news. Uh, I think the, the schools had sufficient dust in their, in their air conditioners uh, for some time now and everybody else has ingested it in their lungs, so it's, uh, it's not before time. So a wonderful investment for this community, what's going on there, and put together by some brilliant people, some really committed local people. Um, are there any more, any other nominations? I would also like to add my name um, to that. Um, so I'd like to nominate for position of council member um, on that Victor Harbour Oval Planning Group. I think that it's a great group with all of the, the different clubs involved. I'm not affiliated with any of those clubs and so I've got a um, very open mind when it comes to club participation on that oval which the, the council um, own and need to make sure that all the clubs have a, a, an equal say in what, what goes on there. Um, so Excuse I'll me, put Mayor. my hat in the ring. I, I withdraw. The clubs do have a, uh, a very much an equal say and uh, it's been the Ruse Club and the RSL that have dragged the rest along and are very committed to supporting every single club there. And um, I think you've got the wrong end of the stick there and I don't think you need to be involved. So if you want to be involved, I'm happy to remove my nomination. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank, you. Thank you, Councillor Charles. Are there any other nominations? Councillor Glasbrook? Councillor Robertson? You don't want to nominate? Oh, sorry, I thought you and Councillor Glasbrook were discussing whether you were going to. All right. Um, so, given there are only one nomination for both positions, there's no ballot required, so I'll put back to you to resume standing orders. Um, so, can I have hands up for those um, who are happy to go back to meeting procedures? Thank you very much. That's everybody. Um, and the... Um, so the um, recommendation is that council appoints councillor Schofield and for chairperson and councillor myself, um, Mayor Jenkins, as council member um, to the Victor Harbour Planning Group. Um, there may be a conflict, perceived conflict of interest in me being here, but there's no remuneration involved and I'm not um, part of the voting. Um, and so um, I'll be staying in the chair in order to chair, the, chair that meeting. Um, so, would somebody like to um, move that way? Thank you, Councillor Littley. And seconded by Councillor Henderson. Thank you. Do either of you want to speak to that? Does anybody want to speak to it? All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. The fourth recommendation is that Council adopt the Victor Harbour Planning Oval Group Terms of Reference provided at Attachment A. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Henderson and seconded. Councillor Robertson, any discussion? 
Councillor Robertson. Uh, yes, um, Mayor, I have a number of issues related to the um, to the terms of reference for this um, group. Um, one of which is uh, is uh, I find it very confusing. Why I have a question for the CEO. Is this an advisory group? Um, its title is that of a planning group. Is there any difference between the two? Um, the, uh, the, so that would be the, the first question. And then I have some other. Um. So through the mayor, uh, at item 1.1, .1, the establishment, it says the City of Victor Harbour Council resolved to establish an advisory group to be known as the Victor Harbour Oval Planning Group, the advisory group. So its title is the Victor Harbour Oval Planning Group, but it is an advisory group of council. Yeah, um, because there seems to be um, uh, in 3.1, the it, it's an advisory group, but its title is that of a planning group. No, it doesn't. It's there um, again to, it's looking at the whole oval complex. It's not specifically, it's not part of that, it's not looking at the Ruse building, it's looking at that oval complex and all the users of that complex, the oval complex. And it's about planning and making sure that they all work together when they're trying to uh, have events. So we refer to it as the planning group because that's what they would be doing mainly, informing each other of what's happening there when council has got things that need to be changed or updated that impact all of them. It would be a group that we would refer to. And that's really referenced in terms of um, item two, which is the purpose. And it says to discuss and where agreed develop design concepts, costings, including costs sharing arrangements for development, operational costs of the proposal related to the, the playing fields, joint project opportunities, liaison between the user groups and other possible shared users. It's around planning. Indeed, and um, I, that was my interest in, in this uh, group as well, was that it is long-term. Um, it should be meeting more than twice a year. Uh, it is about trying to maximise the use of the oval. There are the obvious sports that are played there now and the coordination on the use of the Oval and the surrounding areas, um, but there's uh, also the emergence of athletics, and I would hope that we would get um, other uh, cultural and entertainment um, events in there. So it's about uh, optimal use of um, that resource, and the um, and its job is to scope the plans and costings for possible future development options. Um, the looking at some of the so one of the issues to me was that they're going to need to be meeting more than twice a year that um, I think it'd be really important that the meeting notes um, if they're to be of their their council committee type notes which are just recording um, motions or recommendations that that won't be good enough but I think there should be audio recording at least of um, of those meetings, that the um, it, in 11.3 it says that the the group is going to be meeting at the council chambers. To me, they're just over the road. Why are they meeting in the council chambers? They should be meeting on site. Should be meeting uh, at um, the facilities at the at the oval itself. Um, the, the CEO um, in 11.4 is um, closes the meeting uh, to the public, as um, because of but most meetings will be about planning. So I would have hoped that that doesn't occur uh, very often because uh, it's important that the community knows what's going on. Um, and also 16.1, why we have to vacate the offices <coughs> or the the positions on the on the group uh, during uh, council elections. I'm not sure of that, but to me the uh, the, the council role in um, this group 
should be one of um, the final arbiter as a facilitator, as an enable, enabler. I, to me, it looks as though it's a, a lot of it is um, is more in the position of a controller. I know that the um, the thing uh, developments that will take place on the oval because it is council property, uh, council will inevitably be putting money into um, the outside of the facilities, and quite rightly, as you say, we're not talking about the the buildings like the, the Roos Club now, just the surroundings. But uh, I hope that it becomes a really a really major focal point for entertainment, um, Victor Harbour. So this um, planning group um, will have to be meeting frequently and uh, more frequently than twice a year. Thank you, Councillor Robertson. Um, if you look at 11.1, .1, the advisory, it's got that the advisory group shall meet at least twice a year. So I would envisage that it would meet a lot more than that. Um, but this says at least twice a year. Um, in terms of 11.3, while it says that meetings will be held at the Civic Centre, it also says, or another venue agreed to by the advisory group members. So I'd imagine after the first meeting that depending on what the members want, um, they may be held elsewhere um, as well. Um, I th think that was the main, the main two things that I noted with some of the concerns that you had. If I might, Mayor, that it says that the meetings will be held at the Civic Centre. I mean, why yeah, would or, you ever want to or, hold the meetings here? Or, if you keep reading that, the advisory group meetings will be held at the Civic Centre, One Bay Road, Victor Harbour, or another venue agreed to by the advisory group members. Oh my goodness. Yes, of course, uh, they may agree to that, but why make the default meeting place the Civic Centre? It, uh, to me, it is, um, doesn't make uh, sense, but anyway. Okay. Are there any, any further comments? If not, I'll put recommendation for the vote. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Ten point three point five, which is the annual report. The first recommendation is that Council receive a note the report relating to the 2018-19 annual report. Should that be the 2019-20 annual report? No, so 2018, beg your pardon, and your report. Would someone like to move that way? Thank you, Councillor Glasbrook, and seconded. Councillor Luke Robertson, does anybody want to speak to receiving and noting the report, relating to the report? All those in favour? Sorry, Councillor Robertson, did you want to speak to it? No? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. The second recommendation is that Council adopt the 2018-19 annual report. Um, would someone like to move that way? Councillor Henderson, thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Glasbrook, thank you. Does anybody want to speak to that? Councillor Robertson? Oh, sorry, Councillor Glasbrook. Sorry, I didn't see your hand. I'll just quickly thank the staff for putting in the effort to preparing that document. It's a very large document and um, good effort. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Robertson, did you want to say something? Your microphone's not on. Uh, the I queried this afternoon um, if the 11.9 million capital expenditure for uh, 18, um, 19 was correct or not, and I think that um, manager of Finance was going to check whether that was actually the correct figure um, or not. Um, Can I just ask Kelly, is that the correct figure? Uh, thank you, through the Mayor. Um, no, it's not the correct figure. Um, so 16-17 um, should be the 11.9 million and the 2018-19 should be the 6.9 million. So they were entered in the wrong way around. So yeah, good pick up. Thank you, Councillor Robertson. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then a question um, as well. The the annual report um, 
the CEO, the annual report is 268 pages long. Um, 101 of those pages are for the city of Victor Harbour. The um, uh, the, the report that's going to the report that's sent to Adelaide to the state government that includes the Horsethorn tram and the other two um, entities, the, the um, Waste Authority and the Aquatic Centre. And the Southern Hills, that's correct. As it appears, that entire full document goes to Parliament as we're required to by the 30th of November. Are there any further comments? Councillor Kemp. Um, I'm not going to support adopting this uh, annual report. Unfortunately, it's a lovely document. There's a lot of work been put into it. I understand that. But to me, on page 11 of the end report, the key performance results, to me, is not a true performance of council. And I think that we, to me personally, I think we're giving a false impression that our council is really performing. You can do a lot with figures about, you know, percentages and various things like that and wording. But I think in reality that, um, you know, you only can measure the performance of the council and what it actually completes, not what you may complete or nearly complete. It's really what you do complete. That's your performance. And the 89% uh, shows a better figure than an 83%. So I don't uh, believe uh, I can support this uh, resolution because I don't think the figures and the reporting of our performance is correct. I might ask the CEO to respond to that. Unfortunately, I don't have any response. I think we've had this discussion in terms of what Councillor Kemp's interpretation of the key performance result areas are and what ours are. Um, it was not raised at the audit committee. I mean, we can we know that we would like to reduce them and have more clear and concise ones, but uh, I think it is reflective of what was actually delivered through this um, that financial year. Uh, through the mayor, I need to ask the CEO to stand corrected because it was raised at the audit committee by me and uh, Kelly Knight Stacey was going to get back to me and check those figures and it never did come back to me so far as I'm concerned it was raised and um, I still believe that it's not a true record of our performance. Kelly? Uh, thank you through the Mayor. Um, so we did take on board some of your comments around those key performance results and the activities that were on track and actually included a note on that page, on page 11, um, with an asterisk next to that activities on track and the 89% to explain what that included. So activities on track included KPAs completed or substantially completed. So we did actually put some, some notes in there to show what we were actually calculating that percentage on. Um, so that, that was how we were basically trying to explain how, how we worked out that, that percentage. Thank you. Are there any further comments? If not, I'll put um, that recommendation to the floor that Council adopt the 2018 annual report. All those in favour? And those against? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, 10.3.6 is the 2020 Local Government Association Ordinary General Meeting, proposed items of business and appointment of delegate. Um, I'm happy to do recommendation one and two together. Three might require some separate discussion, uh, but one and two are fairly straightforward. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Charles, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Kemp. Is there any discussion around those recommendations? If not, I'll put it to the floor. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. The third recommendation is that Council submits a, note, a notice on motion as provided at attachment A to the Local Government Association for consideration at the 2020 Local Government Association Ordinary General Meeting to be held on Friday the 3rd, 2020 at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. Um, I might, um, with leave of the meeting, just speak to that motion since it was one that I put forward um, but needs your endorsement. Um, the, 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 it's about the banning of single-use plastics at local government events. It seems to me that a lot of councils are doing this sort of at a piecemeal approach with different ways of, of doing it. And what the motion um, looks at doing is having the local government association 
um, examine um, what the best way of doing that as a local government area um, with all the councils and then coming back um, and formulating a motion that um, councils either decide to take up or not take up. So the, um, the actual um, motion is um, related to um, Victor Harbour Council recognising the use of single-use plastics um, and it looks at a whole of government approach would be beneficial and requests that the local government association investigate all councils implementing banning single plastics and approve at a council organised and approved events and encourage event organisers to find other suitable um, alternatives um, as a whole. So that would be going to um, look at the LGA um, taking that on board and it goes to all of the other councils to see whether or not it gets their endorsement or not. Um, so would somebody like to move that way? Councillor Henderson, thank you, and Councillor Charles seconding it. Do either of you want to speak to that? Councillor Henderson? Just a question, Mayor. Uh, once it goes to the other councils, does it then have to come back to the LGA, AGM? It does. Yes. Yeah, I'd just say that it's not unique. Uh, there are Queensland councils uh, in this, you would have read in the local uh, government magazine that have um, got serious about this. And I, I think it's, uh, it's high time, due time, that we do something about it. Uh, as we know, so much plastic goes into our rivers and straight into the ocean. We're right here on the ocean. We're right beside the rivers. Uh, we need to, uh, to be more mindful of what, uh, what's going in and that we're capturing as much as we possibly can before it's washed out to sea. Uh, and this, uh, this should be supported, I think, by other councils. Does anybody else want to speak to that? Councillor Robertson, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, the, uh, I'm all in on, on this um, issue of the single-use plastics. Um, I think it's terrible that we, we have so many of them. But, um, yeah, to me, this stuff is just all about politics. The, what we've got here, because we're not backing that up. If you go to the other councils and they say, well, what are you actually doing about that? We haven't even tried it to see what would happen to our events and so forth if we said to the people, oh, you can't have those single-use plastics. So, um, you know, to me, it's just sort of all... Sort of, kind of woolly stuff. There's no hard regulations backing it up. There's nothing, there's no education program that's been put in place. It's just another one of these, um, you know, uh, fashionable things, but it's real and it should be, should be dealt with. But um, to me, um, when are we going to do something about <clears throat> investigating what happens at um, festivals and events? because you may not have any um, if you're going to say, right, oh, we're banning all single-use plastics mm -hmm. at them. Very, very, um, very, very difficult mm -hmm. uh, to do that. But anyway, that's, um, say, to me, it's all, mm -hmm. that this stuff mm -hmm. here is all about politics and mm -hmm. not about, we've got nothing to show about mm -hmm. how we're going to go about doing that, which might be useful to other councils who are thinking about mm -hmm. it. I think, um, Councillor Robertson, that's a, a very good point and one of the reasons for um, making this motion because that's something that the LGA can actually investigate and look at how, how councils as a whole can implement such a, um, a policy rather than us having to investigate it and our staff having to investigate it. If the LGA does that a whole on behalf of councils, then we can actually do something as a whole. I know that the state government is also doing some investigations as well at this time in relation to single-use plastic. Um, Councillor Charles. No, it's um, a, it's just a, a typing error here that you've got uh, in supporting information. I should have said earlier, turning the ride, no turning the tide. Ah, thank you. Is there any further discussion on that? If not, I'll put that to the vote. Um, all those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Um, item 10.4.1, outstanding resolutions. 
And the recommendation is that Council receive and note the outstanding resolutions November 2019 report. Does someone want to move that way? Councillor Robertson and seconded by. Councillor Henderson, thank you. Does anyone want to speak to the outstanding resolutions? Councillor Charles and Councillor Robertson. Sorry to keep banging on about this, but there's been plenty of opportunity. We're still looking at 74 High Marsh Road, and we're only one month now off of three years since this, um, this particular uh, motion was uh, put to Council and carried. Crown land adjoining 74 High Marsh Road to 64 Highwood, Hayward Court, Victor Harbour. Yes, Council make application to the Department of Environment and Water. It was rather funny because I had a, a person who'd locked his keys in his boot at one of those residences the other day, and um, it was the uh, residence once of uh, Dick Rimel. Uh, it's no longer that. Uh, it was being used as a, a, a schoolie's rental place. I don't think uh, many of these people actually live there. There is one uh, who've just extended the house. Um, but surely it can't be that difficult for the department to uh, do as they say here, um, commence consultation with adjoining residents over land dedication. Um, that piece of land is, is, is just unique. It's, uh, I'm sure they love it as much as, uh, as anyone would, but uh, they can't have it all to themselves. This is public property and, and should remain public property. It's um, crown land. It uh, needs to be... Um, it needs to be brought under council control so that we can uh, we can make use of it um, for the benefit of the people that live here, the tourists, uh, and for the whole community just to enjoy and still won't uh, impact on these people's lives. Uh, I'm just disappointed it's taken that long. That's all. It's just incredible. Mm. And I'll also, ask um, CEO McCurdy. Oh, we've spoken about before. You've written you've written the letter off. I've written a letter. Yep. Um, but it's just not good enough. I think we're in the business of making friends and not ruffling any feathers. Uh, for some people who want to uh, move on in life, they need uh, contacts and people that uh, are going to be ideal. So, you know, those people in this council and administration who don't want to uh, uh, ruffle feathers further up the line, who may need a favour from these people in the future, well, they generally remain silent. And it's only people like me that couldn't give a damn, because uh, you can't touch me anyway uh, in my business, um, who speak honestly and forthrightly and, and speak what the clients and the community are saying. CEO McCurdy doesn't need to respond to that. Um, are there, is there any further discussion? Councillor Kemp? Oh, sorry, Councillor Robertson um, was first. Do you want to say something, Councillor Robertson? Then I'll come back to you, Councillor Kemp. Uh, yeah. Um, just looking at my notes here, the I took my notes off the off the documents that were the at, attachments to this uh, meeting today, and they're different from the one which, if you look in the outstanding resolutions, it's in the agenda itself. So I'm, I'm, these comments of mine are related to the um, outstanding resolutions table, which is in the um, uh, which is in the um, attachments to the um, agenda. Um, the, on the bottom of the, um, of the, uh, I'm not so interested in the um, completed ones, uh, in the incomplete ones at the bottom there, the, at the bottom of that one. Um, yeah, this was, um, on a, the one at the bottom there, a question for the CEO, the, um, the Native Fauna Conservation Committee, which was something obviously I have an interest in. Um, this is uh, was voted on to establish the uh, committee and um, so far there's no follow-up action. Um, what is the, for the CEO, what is the normal um, course of events once the council has um, I know 28th of October is not that far away, but not, uh, not that long past, but uh, still. Yep, through the Mayor. So that was at the last Council meeting and we discussed at the time that while Council, um, you're actually a little bit hesitant about forming another group at that time, but I advised that we would look to hold a work 
working party or a workshop, sorry, a briefing with members to look at the formulation of a terms of reference. And at this stage, I'm not looking to do that until earlier in the new year because it wasn't a priority at the time. It was more about establishing it. So there should be an updated uh, comment of that, but it's in progress. And I have it on our list of council briefings to come back to you around what that terms of reference will look like. Yeah. Um, just on the also on the 28th of um, 10th one as well the um, the um, well it should say helium balloons but it, it says here that balloons full stop um, are not permitted um, but we've got no follow-up action that's taken place and we've got an awful lot of celebrations coming up so um, that one has that resolution has no no uh, follow-up action taking place um, uh, so far. And then also on the 28th in last October's meeting, uh, we had the LED lights um, um, the, that we would be putting in a the last line on uh, OC 73329. Um, the council will undertake a community awareness program relating to LED street lighting transition arrangements in the lead up to uh, the project implementation. So I was just wondering, uh, again, it's not so long past, but the, these projects keep on coming at us pretty quickly and that's quite a significant task to get a community awareness campaign going. Um, I'm just wondering uh, what's happening with that? There's no follow-up action here in the. I might ask Jody to respond to that one, Councillor Robertson. Through the Mayor, thank you. Um, I just have to apologise because that last page from last council meeting didn't get circulated to the staff in our department. That's why the comments aren't on there. That doesn't mean action hasn't been taken. Um, in this particular case, I will have to revert back to Glen Stanford because I'm not sure of the particular action that's been taken on this one, but we can update those actions and get back to you. Um, sorry, through the Mayor, if I can just add to that, I am aware that uh, Glenn has been working with Michelle in our communications area in terms of developing the communication plan around the rolling out. Um, the actual documentation has not been signed as yet. Um, we provided a further update for members as requested, well not as requested, but I knew there was discussion or concern around the deed, which we did follow up with further information and detail around the deed. Um, I am still waiting to do the final signing off of the um, SAFN agreement and the deed agreement. We're just doing some final checks through those documentation and Glenn Sandford had been working with Michelle in terms of that communication and engagement for our community. So work is underway in that area. Are there any further discussion? Councillor Kemp? Yes, and I just want to start to say thank you to the Chief Executive Officer in responding to a series of questions I raised about the outstanding resolutions. Thank you, CEO. Um, but um, there are three items here, examples why I won't support accepting this document, this resolution tonight. There's not enough information and we've been requesting information for a while now to have extra comments as to why or why is not something happening. For example, page nine, I, have to, I numbered my own pages, so <laughs> I did suggest we should put numbers on them um, so we can go to ones quickly. But the one was a notional modus uh, with building fire safety system council owned buildings. Now, these is deal with the Kerrigalinga house. Now there's two items in there. One's about lights, one's about a safety escape door, fire escape door. There's only one comment about the lights have been done. So where are we at with, because there was a certain criteria that had to be met by the building fire safety committee to have um, all these uh, fire safety requirements in place by a certain time frame. I know there could be a slight delay in some areas because there was a short notice. But again, there's not enough information here for elected members to get an understanding where we're at with these resolutions. The other one which the CEO responded to is the one on the um, a charter to be developed and put in place back to this council by November meeting, which hasn't been done, but there's because uh, again, the CEO's explained that, that's fine, but that type of comment should be in here to keep us understanding what's going on. 
And another one um, on the same page was notice the motion of Caroline House parking with Councillor Charles and report being prepared for November ordinary council meeting. No reports being delivered again. Surely we can keep these documents updated to give us an indication why there's no report for November. The staff too busy, whatever the reason is, let's have some type of clarity around uh, what's happening with these resolutions because there's so many um, outstanding um, and some of it's good. Don't get me wrong, some of it's just very poor commentary. I think we just need to improve on that for us elected members to have a better understanding on you know what's going on. So uh, most probably will stop a lot of questioning on this uh, article. But at the moment, I can't support this uh, resolution because I think there's insufficient information in the document to be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. I'll ask um, CO McCurdy to respond to you, but just note the recommendation um, is just receiving and noting. It's um, not supporting um, at, at all. But um, CO McCurdy? I'll take on board and note all of your comments, so thank you. Right. Thank you. Are there any more, any more comments? If not, I'll put the recommendation and just highlight again, it's to receive and note the outstanding resolutions. Um, report all those in favour. Those against? That's carried, thank you. Um, we are now up to item 11.1.1, Community Energy Program. Um, this relates to the workshop that we had two weeks ago. And the first, just wondering whether or not, I'll do the first two recommendations together. The first recommendation is receiving and noting the report. And the second recommendation is that council finalises involvement in the community energy program and publishes the resource developed by the project for community industry and local government sector use. I prefer, I prefer to discuss them separately, please, because yep. yep. there are issues around. Yep, Thank sure. You. Okay. So we'll do the first recommendation that we receive and note the report. So you're happy to move that way? Councillor Robertson and Councillor Kemp to second that. Um, any discussion on receiving and noting the report? All those in favour? That's carried, thank you. The second recommendation is the Council finalise involvement in the Community Energy Program and publish resources developed by the Project for Community, Industry and Local Government Sector Use. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Robertson, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Charles. Can I have a question? What does finalise? mean involvement does that mean go through to uh, I would group? imagine that I'll I'll check with um, director Pathouse but I'd imagine finalize means stop stop going forward but I'll check with director Pathouse sure through the med <clears throat> pardon me just to clarify <clears throat> um, fi finalize the involvement in terms of the resilient hills and coast community energy program the the, the broader program that was in place um, and you might recall through the workshops that um, all of those councils are no longer proceeding with that so the the, the critical mass to enable that to happen um, is slipping away so that's that's what it means by finalizing or um, stopping any yeah, further just, involvement in that in that in the regional aspect of it and then the subsequent our uh, recommendations look at how we might then continue with something uh, at a local level for ourselves here. Thank you, Graham. Thank you for that explanation. Um, so we're looking for a second. Are you happy to second that, Councillor Charles? I, I, Is that what you're doing? Well, now that I understand what that means, I, maybe I'll just bring up and make a comment. Make well, a comment. Could, well, I'd like to get a okay, mover well, I'll and a second. second of, but I'll make a comment. Yeah, all right, so second okay, by Councillor Charles. Because we know, as far as our workshop that we had, that we initially had six councils and then already Kangaroo Island, who I would have thought would have been ideal for this because they're a closed community and uh, they dropped out. So our $90,000 is obviously going to go up. And I had no idea that others had also lost interest, although there's been some some you know doubts expressed here, but not for definite. And, and I couldn't work out why we weren't, or this group, um, who have done a great job, Mark Prisabilla has spent a lot of his life doing this and a lot of council time uh, on this, and I think someone else from staff. Um, but wh why have we not presented this to the 68 councils of South Australia right from the start? 
Uh, there are tiny little councils with 900 to 1,000 residents. There's others with 2,500 residents or 2,600 as you start to look around, particularly in the mid-north, who all, and all the residents and all the businesses there who would appreciate cheaper electricity, surely to God. But they can't go it alone as we can. I mean, we, we had six councils and now people are dropping out. But surely this is something that should be uh, embraced by all councils because as it explains in this paperwork here, and I was against this after we had our presentation at the workshop. The presentation of the workshop was was positive, yet yeah, it was negative, then it was positive, it was negative. It, it went on like that and I said, well, look, you know, there's so many ways people can get cheaper power, but um, you, you can Google it, the suppliers and the people who, who negotiate on your behalf, big switch, people like that. But 68 councils with 68 council needs from town halls through to street lighting to everything else must be a magnificent mm. beginning, surely mm. to God. So those, that as a base and then your schools and, and, and your private enterprises after that, um, there would be electricity suppliers jumping and chafing at the bit to get that particular contract. Mm. So I don't know why we're mucking around with, with six councils in the first place. Yeah. I wonder, Councillor Charles, when it comes to recommendation three in terms of, under the auspices of the Strategic Planning Committee, a renewable energy advisory group is formed. That may be a recommendation that comes to that group that goes to the LGA um, to, to get involvement from other councils. So that might be something that can still be done. Um, but at the moment, the recommendation is relating to finalising our involvement in that regional aspect um, with just the few councils that, that were there. Um, but I certainly understand your, and, and agree with your, your points. I'll just ask CEO uh, McCurdy to say something. Um, through the man, in direct relation to your comments, Councillor Charles, part of the funding agreement we received from the Local Government Association uh, Research and Development Fund is we were required to share all the information with the other councils. Um, so one of the requirements was mapping the project journey as a case study and developing a toolkit for deliverables for use by other councils. So this, as a result, this will be shared with all other councils. That's part of the funding agreement that we received. Thank you. Yes, I, I saw the $45,000 or whatever that was, um, and, and that's good. But but I, I think those need to take it a step further uh, because this is, this is almost destined to get put into a nice file and put into a cupboard somewhere to gather dust um, for their reference. Because it, it, all councils are far too busy unless you poke it up their uh, nose. They're not going to um, look at it, um, and it's a great opportunity. I think, it, unfortunately, it could meet, it could just not happen. Councillor Kemp, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, Mayor Jenkins. Um, a couple of issues, or oh, sorry, uh, a couple of questions. One is uh, to finalise our involvement, what's the cost? Is there any additional cost to our council to finalise our involvement? And what's the time frame? Is around about March next year, I believe, is that correct? Director Patas. Uh, through the Mayor, there's no further cost. So the costs have been uh, dispersed already. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by when the due date is. Well, when do we finalise our involvement? Is there an end date to when we finalise it? Because well, there's still development of the toolkit to be done, so there's going to be work ongoing, I would imagine. Well, the toolkit, just pretty much the resources that have been now been developed and are available for all the councils will then be there for um, use by the councils, but also distribution to the you know, uh, local government association and other interested parties and other councils as well. So effectively, um, the um, conclusion of that aspect of the work can be effective pretty much immediately. We'd send a letter to, um, to the other councils to advise them. Councillor Robertson, um, you will be closing debate as the mover. A question, yep. Um, to direct your pad house, to, uh, does that mean that potentially, even if it's only a few thousand, there might be some savings to the budget for this year then, if there's no further cost to be incurred? No, I don't feel there's going to be any further savings. The, 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 the budget allocation that we had has been expended on the project. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to say, contribute to the debate? Councillor Robertson, do you want to close the debate? 
Yes, thanks, Mayor. Um, I think that uh, the um, the, the good things that will come out of this uh, project, the lessons learnt, the um, material that will be made available, as Councillor Charles has said, that um, there's lessons to be learnt out of this and they can go to some of those more remote uh, rural areas, for instance, but other councils as well. Um, I think that the, the point of contact with this sort of program uh, is not at a multi-council level, that's at a sub-council level where this sort of stuff can work. Uh, not exactly at street level, but certainly in a council like Victor could be at a suburban level. So uh, I think part of the reason that it just didn't work was um, herding six councils to, together on this was always a huge ask. And anyway, the conditions in the market conspired against that. So, um, but the good things that have come out of it um, is the potential for people to pick up the um, foundational aspects. I'm not sure that it needs foundations to be set up, but if people wanted to, that they could do that. So that's all coming up. So yeah, I think it's, it's um, a lot of efforts gone in by the council over several years, a lot of very good effort and all is not lost. And um, so winding this up is a good thing and uh, getting down to some reality uh, with regard to what can be done with the outputs is what we should be doing now. Thank you. Um, I'll put that to the floor then. That's recommendation two. Um, and all those in favour? Those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Third recommendation is that Council, under the auspices of the City Activation and Strategic Planning Advisory Committee, form a renewable energy advisory group, the purpose of which will be to provide recommendations to Council on its role in the area of advocating for the uptake of renewable energy that supports reducing local energy costs for council and the community. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Littley, Councillor Henderson seconding that. Either of you want to speak to it? Does anybody want to speak to that? Councillor Kemp and then Councillor Robertson. Um, through the, the Mayor, I'm not supporting this uh, resolution due to the fact that um, how many more advisory groups does this council have to keep setting up? I mean, the time factor for another three elected members to be on board, um, I just feel that it's not required. I think council so far today has done a magnificent job, the staff, uh, without having an advisory group supporting them. I think, you know, with the uh, Zen project uh, going back a few years ago, worked really well with staff doing it. Um, the Sappen plan with the LED lights in the streets have done marvellously. We need an advisor group to do that. I just think there's another layer we're putting in place, a bureaucracy layer in there, which I don't think is required, so I won't be supporting it. Uh, Councillor Robertson, you want to speak to it? Yes, I'd like to. I don't know what the word is, uh, variation or whatever the word is. Anyway, I think the purpose of this... Um, what, can you tell me what your variation is? And yeah. I'll ask the mover and the seconder if they're happy for, to move that variation. Yes, um, I think that the uh, way it says in there um, that supports reducing local energy costs should be removed. I mean, it's always a dangerous thing to put that thing in. You don't necessarily get reduced local energy costs from this sort of thing and detracts from what's trying to be done. The, that should be removed, that um, included in in this group, if you're going to set it up, uh, would be um, uh, objectives of uh, active sequestration of carbon into agricultural land and the promotion of carbon neutral energy positive uh, construction. Mm. Let me um, just ask the mover and the seconder um, how they feel about that variation, otherwise you'll need to make a formal motion. Um, Councillor Littley? I think the uh, motion as it stands is sufficient. Um, it's more general. I think Councillor Robinson, while I agree with some of the the aspects of what he's saying, I think that's getting more pointy and more technical. And um, at this point in time, um, it, it's not required in this motion. So, so no, I don't. I, I don't support the change. Okay. 
So, Councillor Robertson, if you want that change, you'll need to um, do a formal amendment um, to that motion and see whether or not your amendment is um, taken up by the by the elected body. Uh, yeah. All right. So you want to move an amendment? Yeah, move an amendment. So your yeah. amendment is to, to delete the and to delete and support reducing local energy costs, and to include the phrase. You'll need to repeat that about the sequestration of. Yeah. Can um, you repeat that, please, for um, Karina? Yeah. Uh, the active. If you've got it, if you've got it written down, maybe just come and show her so that she can write it down. We will have a break in 10 minutes so people can get up and have a bit of a wriggle around. Thank you, Councillor Robertson. Do I have a seconder for Councillor Robertson's amendment? If I don't have a seconder, then the amendment will lapse due to want of a seconder. I'm sorry, Councillor Robertson, your amendment has lapsed due to want of a seconder. We go back to the original motion. The original motion was made by moved by Councillor Littley, seconded by Councillor Henderson. Does anybody else want to speak to it that hasn't spoken to it? If not, I'll Councillor Charles. I'll quickly say that I don't believe we need another uh, advisory group, and that's why I'll be voting against it as well. There's just not enough people and time and people to conduct these meetings and staff to go to the meetings to, um, and that's the reason why I didn't support your amendment. So, thank you, um, Councillor Littley. Do you want to close the debate? Thank you. Um, oh, I know we've got a lot of uh, um, advisory groups and the like, but uh, personally, I'm, I'm quite engaged with this area. I have quite a deal of interest there. And as we've spoken about, um, the staff are doing a, a good job. Um, I think as councillors, I, I understand there's a number of councillors um, who are um, involved in this area and ha have a, a real passion for it, Councillor Robertson being one there. Um, and I think that the support that we could give to the staff, um, staff are already putting in the time on the on these projects. So it goes, in my mind, um, we're value adding as elected members with a real interest and some real um, knowledge to to work with our staff. And I think it's a, a great thing. Work for our staff for um, potentially some real savings for our community on a project where there are real savings, the genuine, genuine savings. I can say right now, I was fortunate enough to go to the uh, launch of the SA Produce Markets, um, the first ever Australian, first ever in Australia, the microgrid last week. It's a cost of $10.3 million each year. That saves them $430,000 in power costs for the markets alone, and it can power up to 4,300 homes. So there are significant savings there for community facilities like this and, and programs like this, and we should be after them. Thank you, Councillor Littley. I will put that recommendation to the floor. Um, all those in favour and those against? That's a tied recommendation. I um, I'm going to vote for the recommendation. The reason that I'm voting for the recommendation is that I think that um, if there's anything that we can do as a council to help the community um, uptake renewable energy, 
um, anything we can do to help the community reduce their energy costs, I think that's great. I think that this council is becoming a leader in um, looking at the environment. Um, we've been looking at balloons um, and banning helium balloons. We've got the motion that's going to the local government association about plastics. And if we can help with um, reducing energy costs and trying to get people to use clean energy, I think that that's a, a great idea. And we have got people on the council, such as Councillor Robertson, um, who is passionate and knows a great deal about this. Um, even though Councillor Charles um, voted against it, I know from conversations that we've had in the past, and I know that things that you've said, Councillor Charles, that this is something that you are very passionate about in terms of um, community energy production. So I will be voting for it. The, in terms of the argument that um, you know we've got lots of elected members are doing lots of different things, I wonder whether or not um, somebody might like to make the motion um, in relation to recommendation five that we wait until all the elected members, um, uh, sorry, recommendation four, um, that we wait until all the elected members are present um, and perhaps we move that recommendation, we defer that recommendation to the December meeting. Um, so that there may be more people to share the burden um, within relation to being on that committee um, because there may be other people that are interested in being on that committee. But I'll leave that to, to one of you to, um, to move that as a motion without notice um, perhaps after, after this motion. So um, I will be voting for this motion um, for the Renewable Advisory Energy Group. Thank you. Um, so now we come to um, motion recommendation number four, unless somebody wants to move that we defer recommendation four until the December meeting. Councillor Charles? I think it's logical that we do defer it till the next meeting. Um, I don't know where we're going to get the three members from here tonight. Uh, we might have three, but... Um, I think it might be best just to leave it than have a full council, providing nobody's uh, giving us an apology again, as I see so often on the committees and everything else. That's why I'm voting uh, or way to vote as I did. Uh, you're right. I do have passion for uh, for this particular item, um, but I think we should be more proactive and put a motion into the LGA and and just go for it the right way through mm -hmm. councils and and and, um, and get that. The, and that, Councillor Charles, might be a recommendation that this create, Renewable yeah. Energy Advisory Group might Create a big event rather than fiddle around here and expect to save people 50 bucks a year on their electricity. Yeah. Um, CEO McCurdy has just suggested that it's items four and five that are adjourned until the following meeting. Councillor Robertson, did you want to second that? Sorry, I wanted to ask a question. Oh, so, sure. Um, from the CEO. <clears throat> um, there are no um, community members on this, um, this group. And thinking about it uh, today, I think it would be, there are some, some really keen and, and really capable people in our um, in our community here, I'm sure, would be interested in in joining in. Is there any yeah. possibility that we can have community members as well? Yeah. Um, Councillor Robertson, I, um, what I suggest is that um, because there's no terms of reference or anything like that involved in this, so that if we are going to be um, deferring the for recommendation four and five until next um, meeting, um, what I would do is I'd ask the CEO to um, add um, another recommendation in relation to community involvement in this, because I think you're quite correct in terms of it needs community involvement um, and community representation. You want to add to that? Um, the intent was to actually formulate with the elected members to work with Mark Prisabella about formulating a terms of reference that would come back to the uh, CASPAC committee for endorsement and that would obviously entail what other um, expertise or community participation you would want on that group. 
Okay, we have a recommendation from Councillor Charles that um, recommendation four and five be deferred to the December meeting. Are you seconding that, Councillor Littley? Does anybody want to speak to that? You're all happy and understand that recommendation, Councillor Henderson? I'd like to suggest we may have three members who are willing to put their hand up for the three positions. And I uh, know it could be argued that some of us are spreading ourselves thin, but uh, I'd like to also say that of all the committees and advisory groups that I'm on, I've never been a single apology for any of them. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Um, if the Council Charles, do you want to close if, the debate? If we give it a crack tonight and uh, it fails, can we bring it back again to the December meeting? Or shall we just go ahead with uh, Councillor Henderson's proposal that we vote tonight? Can we, if it's defeated tonight? The other tonight, option may be if you don't, if you only appoint one or two members that you bring it back to the December meeting for the third, you know, second or third member. It just gets a bit messy. I'm half doing it now and half doing it later. You attract your okay. All right. Um, so you're attracting your seconder. Um, you're attracting your moving the motion, Councillor Charles. All right. So the fourth recommendation. We're up to the fourth one. Yes, that the chief executive officer be appointed returning officer for the election of elected members, and then on completion of the election, be authorised to declare the successful candidates to the position of elected members to the Renewable Energy Advisory Group. To have a mover, Councillor Charles uh, Glasbrook, thank you, and Councillor Littley, thank you. Either of you want to speak to that? Oh, anyone want to speak to it? All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. Um, I'd like to call for a suspension of meeting procedures. Um, do I have hands of those that are fine with that? Thank you. That's unanimous. Um, and I'll hand over to um, I'll hand over to the CEO um, to call for nominations. I'd like to call for nominations, and in doing so, um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Charles. Um, I know, Councillor Charles, that this is something that you have been passionate about in terms of renewable energy um, from when we were first involved in the renewable energy project some couple of years ago. Um, and I think you would be great um, on the advisory group. Yeah, we had a Chinese company who was going to build us a solar farm at no charge up there on the dump, but we knocked that back uh, pretty quickly. I, I am keen. I was the one who raised the LED lighting in the first place, which has now been followed through. Uh, not in a big way, but in a quieter way. But but I, I, I disagree with the way we're doing it. We're still fiddling around in a local parochial way. We need to put this through the big guns up there in the city and push it and push it and push it. And we'd have public support and we need to. That way we'll get something fast. This way, We've done all we can do, and uh, it's just going to be a waste of time. I don't want to be part of it. Thank you. Maybe if you're on the committee, you can get that. No, push. no, no, no. no. Oh, well, okay. the committees committees are, are designed to slow things down, not to create what we need is a benevolent dictator here. Councillor Littley? Yes, I'd like to nominate myself um, for this. Um, I. Um, as I said, I've been involved and in around um, in a professional capacity um, around some renewable energy programs, wind farm launches, um, last week's um, SA produce markets. I, I live off the grid. Um, I live in an energy efficient home. 
um, designed and built around that so I can a celebrated solar city and um, what I saw there with the community embracing that scheme was really was really great so that's the kind of um, vision that we can have to involve our community to sort of save or create their own savings create renewable energies um, a better way of living in our community so um, I'd be honored to be on this and, and put in um, my time and effort um, a big part of these programs is communications and communicating to the public what it's all about and that's my strength and, and my profession so I'd uh, happy be happy to support the uh, advisory group and, and work with staff for a good outcome. Thank you Councillor Littley. Councillor Henderson. I'd also like to uh, nominate myself. Um, I have a graduate diploma in environmental studies in which I studied renewable energy back in the 90s and I, I've kept abreast of all of that as it's changed rapidly over the years. Um, I think Councillor Robertson already knows my, my passion for this and um, I think his idea of sequestering uh, carbon into soils is, is an excellent one and I support that and it is something I think we should look at. And um, I would uh, very much like to have some input. I've had many, many discussions with Mark Prisabella about the, uh, the former energy, community energy program. So um, I'm quite well versed with where that was trying to head. But uh, I think, you know, with the changing um, technology, which is rapidly changing, and uh, now we have the opportunity to look at some of those alternatives. I think this is a great opportunity for our council to start more or less afresh and look at what's available now to, uh, to do the best for our community in terms of energy. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Yeah, Mayor, I'd, I'd uh, like to nominate for this, um, for this uh, committee also. Um, I see the uh, this title here, the Community Energy Program Future Directions, um, in a little bit broader sense than just um, solar panels and batteries, um, and what that can do. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think that, uh, that that we can do a lot practically, reasonably, uh, easily without you know very much, if any, drawdown of the budget um, with uh, assistance with, on media and the like where uh, where the, that word energy is uh, to me is it got a slightly broader context to it than than um, just um, solar panels and, and wind and uh, batteries. Are there any other nominations? If not um, I would um, like to first of all move that we go back into meeting procedure, if, if that's all right, if I can get the hands for that. Yep, that's more than two thirds. So back in meeting procedure. And I'd like to recommend that Council appoint um, Councillor Littley, Councillor Henderson, and Councillor Robertson to the Renewable Energy Advisory Group. Do I have someone to move that way? Councillor Charles, thank you. And a seconder. Councillor Glasbrook, thank you very much. Does anybody want to speak to that? If not, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Councillor Littley, Henderson and Robertson. I think that's a, a fabulous um, initiative of the Council and I wish you and the advisory group very, very well. Um, it is five past eight, so we will have a break um, before we move on to um, item 11.1.2. If you could please come back into the chamber by just after quarter past, that would be appreciated.
Can you tell them to hurry up, Andrew? Can you tell them to hurry up, please? Beautiful, thank you. Okay, we are up to item 11.1.2, which is the advisory group members' resignation. Um, I will take that recommendation. Oh, hang on, we're waiting. Who are we waiting for? No, no one. Representing. Councillor Glasbrook? I'll move one and two. Yeah, well, you're happy to do yeah. one and two, thank you. thank you. And do I have a seconder for that, Councillor Charles? Um, either of you want to speak to that? Anyone want to speak to that? Um, all those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. The next one is item 13 and 13.1.1, which is the revocation of community land lot 87. No, I beg your pardon. Oh, I did miss that. And that's an important one too. Um, so this is the Main Street Master Plan, the next priority stage. Um, you may remember the workshop that we had about this two weeks ago. Councillor Charles, do you want to...? Yeah, I'll say yes to this, please. And as far as I'm concerned, one, two, three can go together. Okay, do I have a seconder for one, two, three on block? Councillor Glasbrook, either of you want to speak to that? Anyone want to speak to that? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Just a question for clarity, not on this, but you know, with the railway terrace project, was that fitting in the scheme of things? So I just need a clarity on that. Director Patterns? We're um, just tidying up the final um, design at the moment and that will be um, need to be considered by council in terms of um, um, capital works projects as we move forward, but we are looking at trying to achieve um, funding through the um, Better, Re uh, Better Regions Fund um, at the moment. Thank you. Councillor Robertson, you have um, a question? Just a question, Mayor. Where are we on 11.1.3? Sorry, I'm... Uh, we've finished 11.1.3. We've finished We're, it? We've finished it. All, all yep. the recommendations? Yep, it was moved and carried, it was moved and seconded and carried on block. Okay. Unanimously. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, well, if I might say something to that, I mean, I think that... Um, um, you could say, I'll give you two minutes. Yeah, well, um, I was going to come in on um, item th um, three, and that is um, the um, McKinley Street one. Um, this, uh, to me, is um, a traffic report's been received. The Anchorage um, development has been um, approved through the development um, committee. So this could be imminent. And um, as far as I know, there's no stormwater works mainly. There's no particular need to pretty it up. Does it really need a redesign? Uh, it's really only footpaths. And, uh, and so does it need to be redesigned? But it isn't it going to be my question is, isn't it going to be forced on us um, to be the next um, the next one off the the, the, um, off the next cab off the rank rather than being last? Um, I'll ask Director Pathouse to um, to answer that one. But as as you know, those recommendations have all just been passed. But Director Pathouse. Yeah, thanks to the mayor. The resolutions that council just passed are predominantly um, driven by. Um, the opportunities for funding. So um, that's why the stages were set out like that. With respect to what was previously stage four, i.e. McKinley Street um, and McKinley Walk, um, there's, um, as Councillor Robertson rightly points out, there's other opportunities that exist there and nothing prevents council from, from bringing that forward in its thinking. Um, and in fact, I'd probably reserve, um, tend to reserve your thinking on that at the moment. It is a uh, item that's been prepared at the moment for the CASPAC meeting that will be held next week, uh, Tuesday evening for you. Thank you. Um, now we're moving on to item 13.1.1, which is the revocation of community land. Councillor Robertson. A question, Mayor. The, um, there are, there's on page um, 
159 here. Yep. There are one, two, three, four, five items there for which there is nothing. Um, we've just skipped over them because there's all of them have got no reports for council decision. For yep. me, on some of these things, um, why are we putting them in if we're just not going to deal with them? And also, why are they in here if we don't have anything to say about them? Is that the only reason an item gets put on the agenda is for a council decision? Surely some of what do we get put in front of us on the agenda is for an update, for information for what's happening. And um, to me, um, we have lots of sources of information about what's going on. We have the council has got very good, um, I like the weekly update that comes out uh, from the CEO's office, a heads up on what's happening on training, events, etc. But still, it's up mm -hmm. and a heads up on that. I think that there's a lot of activities that go on in this council and um, the that there's no reports, even if they're just, you know, three or four or five lines long on some of these, um, you know, important things that are taking place. And um, to me, I think it's um, it's kind of a pity in a way that that as a, at a council level, nothing that doesn't take someone any longer than one minute, that would be it. But um, to put out, you know, a heads up on what's going on, on those things, public, sa public safety and regulatory, that, but community services. And um, because, you know, on community services, we don't get a lot of information on that, mainly because the community service committee are hamstrung because they, all that they report upon is recommendations. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what they, what they get to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, the people in culture, surely something going on there. Um, and, I think, um, so anyway, yeah. that's, that's my point. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I, I, can, I completely understand your point. I think this reflects the new way that the agenda is being or has been developed. Um, you might recall a couple of months ago, the CEO said that the agenda is being redeveloped so that the items are coming for discussion underneath the um, departmental items. So these um, items from 11.2 to 12.3 reflect different departments in the um, organisation where there are no necessarily reports. They're more internal things that are happening around organisational matters that are not up for, um, you know, not, not our area of um, inf influence. Um, and certainly community services, there is the community services advisory committee um, reports um, that, um, that come to council that we look at in the minutes of those meetings. Um, and I'm sure that if there was anything that needed our, um, our noting and reporting, um, we'd get a note and report. Um, and if there's anything that we needed to make a decision on, that would come to us. But I certainly take your point, and perhaps if there was one or two things that were happening in there that might be of public interest or of our interest, um, staff may be able to put them in in the future. So that's a, a good point, Councillor Robertson. <coughs> item 13 is the Environment and Infrastructure Services. And item 13.1, the revocation of community land, lot 87 and 109 Waterport Road. Um, uh, there, that was moved on block by, was that you, Councillor Glassbrook? No, it wasn't moved? Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, would somebody like to um, move that recommendation on block? Councillor Kemp, thank you. And Councillor Glassbrook seconding that. Do either of you want to speak to it? Does anyone want to speak to it? If not, I'll put the motion to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's passed unanimously, thank you. Item 13.1.2, which is the Bridge Terrace Toilet Replacement, the consultation report. Um, and I would like to thank the staff um, looking at that consultation report. There wasn't a lot of feedback, but um, the feedback was good and taken into um, account. Um, I'll take both of those recommendations on block if someone would like to move that way. Councillor Littley, thank you very much, and Councillor Henderson seconding it. Do either of you want to speak to that? Does anybody want to speak to that? Councillor Robertson. Come on, machine. 
Um, yes, Mayor, um, I, I'd like to speak to that. I thought that the feedback that came from the com community, um, whether they're all bridge terror sites or, um, the, or whether they came from further, further afield, but they were, they were pretty good. Um, I would have liked to have seen one, um, one of there about, um, you know, uh, artistic dunnies. I don't like that one. The, um, but I just wanted to ask a question about it. In the design of this, um, of this uh, toilet, of, of this, these <coughs> blocks, um, are there going to be any solar panels on the roofs of those? And um, also because of the feedback that came from, I know it's, Jody? I'd loathe to add anything no, to more costs, etc. But is there any, is there any, I couldn't see in the detailed drawings whether there was going to be any seating provided around there. And I noted that, that in terms of the swim groups that were there and the need for people to marshal um, bodies around uh, limited um, facilities there that they might, um, that seats might be useful. So that was mm. my two questions. Were, yeah. is I'll ask Jody. I'm sorry, I'll ask Jodie Roberts to answer them. Thanks, through the Mayor. Um, to your first question, Andrew, about the solar panels, it's not currently included in the design. We can definitely have a look to see whether that's a feasible option. And your second question about the seating, uh, the, the, this is for the toilet replacement only. The seating would come under our, um, our furniture in our parks or in our street furniture. So we do have um, budget allocation for that kind of thing. So once the toilets are in place, that could be considered. Yeah, I, I was thinking, Jody, if I'm through the mayor, um, that um, maybe the outside of the building could have seats on it. But anyway. Thank you, Councillor Charles. You've yeah, just with the removal of the causeway, we're going to um, have some material there which could be really wonderful for artists to use. You know, some of these large um, timbers that are, that are there, some which are damaged, that are going to be. Uh, you know, don't have to be cut up. The damage can represent something too. Uh, and I was speaking, as I said, at the uh, football club today, the Oval, um, they'd be glad to have some material dropped off there too. So I'd like to make sure that uh, that we put our hands up for all the the uh, removal of the um, causeway, because I'm can sure... We, I know, I know, but can I just... Um, this is referring un, to... It's completely unrelated to I the understand toilet redevelopment. If you just give me two minutes, a second long, longer... Uh, the mention of seats reminded me of it because a lot of these timbers can be used to make seats and we can ask for expressions of interest from people who can design seats using the old causeway and they can be a heritage item throughout the town, around the oval and around uh, the, the foreshore areas and mm -hmm. saving us a lot of money. So I just Thank you. would Thank like you. to see that we do Thank not just you. have that taken away, burnt or dumped. What I suggest you do in future is just make a little note and when we come up to motions on notice or questions on notice or points like that, then then say say what you need to say. You'll get but some next, like to keep... next month. I'm sorry I didn't give you any this, this month. No, no. Um, does anybody else want to say anything in relation to those two recommendations? You can close the debate, Councillor Littley. Um, yep, I think this is um, long overdue. Getting an upgrade of these facilities is great. It is a very much used area. Um, I was down there the other day again. We do have coming up, um, we're going to look at a master plan for that whole area. So um, we'll be able to have those discussions around seating and, and, and how it all looks leading up to that area as well. So good, let's get on with it. Thank you. I'll put that those two recommendations to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's passed unanimously. Thank you. Recreation and Small Grants Program 2019-20, round one grant applications. I'll do this recommendation on block. Um, if somebody would like to move it that way. Councillor Henderson, you happy to move it on block? Thank you. And Councillor Glasbrook yourself? Do either of you want to speak to it? Does anyone want to speak to it? Councillor Robertson? Yes, Mayor. It's just a comment on this. Um, and I look at these um, these grants. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, so much work is being put in by 
them and us for a few hundred bucks. And um, and I like to, the the idea here that at least with the uh, oh no, I'm sorry, that's the next one, the um, basketball one. But the I don't know. To me, we we spend an awful lot of time, you know, to get. Um, few hundred dollars out of these things. Um, I know it all helps, but um, I just wish we could, on this uh, recreation and uh, sport grants program, that we could have, you know, we had a mechanism for us to receive more substantial um, proposals than these small ones. Thank you. Councillor Littley? Just following on from that, um, you make a good point, Councillor Robinson, but having just gone through grant programs and things like that and getting an understanding, I think this is a really good way of training our, or opening the eyes to our clubs and our community sporting groups and that to start those processes of making grants. I know it's small and it's by, but when you get to the state level grants and things like that, Department of Rec and Sport, having gone through you know, the baby steps with a, a grant program like this is really beneficial for those clubs get them engaged and that and I'm finding that in, in some of the work that we're doing. So I agree there's a lot of work but it's it's good training. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Councillor Henderson, do you want to close debate? No. In that case I'll put that recommendation on block one and two. All those in favour? Those against? That's passed unanimous carried unanimously, thank you. 13.1.4, um, sponsorship request for Victor Harbour High School students to attend the National High School Basketball Championships. Um, I'll do that recommendation on block two if somebody would like to move that way. Councillor Glasbrook, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Henderson, thank you. Do either of you want to speak to that? No? Does anybody want to speak to it? Councillor Robertson? Yeah, I, I like the, um, I, I'm voting for this, um, but I do like the, uh, the proposal in here that, the, um, that, that we're assisting at the, at the margins that are so often with these sort of sponsorship requests that, that comes in that, you know, 50% or 100% of the, of the funds come from outside, but here it's a 10 to 1 for Every dollar we're putting in, the, um, the basketballers are raising um, nine on their own account. So uh, I think that's the, that's the emphasis where a lot of this stuff should be. Thank you, Councillor Robertson. Um, does anybody else want to speak? Do you want to close debate? Basbrook? No. In that case, I'll put it to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, infrastructure, 13.3, 13.3.1, the boat ramp options for additional boat trailer parking. Um, and this came from the, um, the working party, um, the boating infrastructure working party. I'll do both of those recommendations on block if someone would like to move that way. Councillor Kemp. Sorry, I prefer to, um, I want to make a comment first before we go into the recommendations. Um, you, you want to move one? Well, okay, I'll move one and talk uh, yep. to it. Thank you. All right. Someone want to second the first recommendation? Councillor Littley, thank you very much. Anyone want to talk to that first recommendation? Councillor Kemp? Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Jenkins. Uh, <clears throat> we are taking on board a recommendation from the Voting Advisory Committee, which hasn't gone back to the City Activation Strategic Planning Advisory Committee for comment and direction to Council. It's jumped that committee, and I don't think that's a proper process we should be following. Um, from my research, I looked at all the minutes and the agendas of the last city activation for the last couple of meetings, and yes, it was in there about we refer them to set up an advisory group to look at all this and come back to us. It hasn't come back to the city activation group. So I think we can't endorse anything that hasn't come back from the city activation committee. Yeah. I note that... Um the number, if you go to page 199, um, that the City Activation Group asked the boating group to develop the concept design options for the additional parking and for that um, to be referred to the City Activation Group um, for comment and direction. Um, so it, it has come to council rather than 
through there, but I don't think that that, that matters. The, the City Activation Group can't make any um, you know, any decisions. The decisions are made by Council. I will ask the CEO to, to comment on that, though. Um, through the Mayor, if I may, on page 200, the only reason why it's coming back straight to Council is insufficient time to be able to get this in place before the City Activation Committee meets. So the decision needed to be made before the 20th or the 19th of December when your December meeting is. But also Council has the ability to take over any of its roles and responsibilities of any of its advisory groups or its committees. And it's clear um, in terms of Council can act outside of those committees at any time. They're committees of the Council. You, you've only given them a, uh, a responsibility to provide you with recommendations and advice. They have no delegation authority. Yeah, it's true. C CEO, yes, I understand that. Um, the process is about and uh, is getting it right and doing it right and having the right debates. You know, we, we, in this chamber, it's very difficult at times to do the right debate by having one or two or more conversations on the same matter. We get one opportunity to speak for five minutes and that's it. Would um, you like to go out of meeting procedures, Councillor Kemp? Because I'm more than happy if, if, the, if you want to speak about no, it. I think so, because oh. I think there's some real safety issues in all this what's been presented, and I think that needs to be discussed. So yep, thank sure. you for that, Mayor Jenkins. Yep, sure. If um, with two thirds of the, the committee happy, we can go out of meeting procedures. Sorry, one, yep, more, than, more than two thirds are happy. So if we go out of meeting procedures, you've got some safety issues, Councillor Kemp. Do you want uh, to? <clears throat> the recommendation on Jagger Road and the 45 degree parking, I went out there and had a look and, um, and you look at what has been prescribed in what is the distance required for a car and a trailer is about 12 metres is required for a safe parking. The distance between the edge of the road, the bitumen to the fence is only 10 metres. So if we go to go and endorse this pro, uh, there's 53 car parks on Jagger Road at a 45 degree angle, apart from there may be enough, not enough distance there to park all the trailers. And there are some bigger trailers and cars in 10, 12 metres. The other one is that reversing out even though you go reduce the speed limit, reversing out trailers onto a, a busy road in some areas and sometimes not always busy, but I understand that it, that is not a, an unsafe, I think that's an unsafe practice and I'm not quite sure whether the police, SAPOL, would be endorsing that type of practice of uh, having cars and trailers reversing out at various times and that from what I've gathered from this information I've had here. So I think there are some safety issues around uh, the location and recommendation. Yep. Might see if Jodie can respond to, to that. Thank you. Um, those safety issues were taken into consideration and that's why the recommendation is for it to be reversed angle parking, so they reverse in rather than reversing out. That area has been used previously by the Tuna Festival. Um, there is a recommendation also to reduce the speed limit to 40 kilometres an hour as event parking for temporarily for that event. And the other item you mentioned about the angle um, about the length of the park, obviously, as the angle increases, the length, the width required is less than the actual length of the parking. So um, we can take that into consideration when we set the exact angle. Oh, look, I understand and I appreciate your comments, Jodie. Uh, I did a 45 degree uh, measurement, you know, which would be a standard uh, mm. angle to you know, have it anyway. So it was 10 metres at a 45 degree angle, not you know, directly to the fence from the road. Um, even reverse parking in is still a dangerous and how they go to straddle the road mm -hmm. to do that. So it's not going to be an easy, so which, how they're going to come down and reverse in, you know, which way they're going to come in, you know, there's going to be signs to direct people to do it properly. If you get 10 or 15 boat trailers trying to reverse park in at various mm -hmm. stages mm -hmm. and blocking the road, uh, which I think they would have. So I just don't think it's not the best area for it. The trouble is there's no area down there which is suitable. That's right. And I but think you comment about how many at a time. So there's four ramps. So any one time there would generally be only four boats unloading. So there'd be, if all at the one time, four boats trying to park, four trailers without boats on them trying to park in that location. Um, we did go out and, and have a look at some of the other sites that were suggested. We did a walk around of the site and this was one that came back as the um, advice from the committee. As it's not a recommendation, it's just advice. And the other one, sorry to finish off on, um, any consultation with the community who live in that area about having that type of, uh, you know, movement outside their properties, you know, and of course causing, 
you know, delays for them if they want to move around. There has been no public consultation yet. Um, you'll see through the presentation that some of the other areas that were identified would have been um, a higher risk of resulting in adverse comments back from the community. The location that's been chosen, well, it's been suggested is um, not adjacent to uh, direct residents. It's further up the road. And as I said, it's been used previously. I have to go back and check to see whether there are any adverse comments from those previous uses. It is only for that one month that it's being um, proposed as a temporary solution for the peak of this season. And the committee is, or the working group are still looking at permanent solutions. Does any, anybody else want to contribute, Councillor uh, Robertson? Yeah, um, I, I think what uh, David had to say is, is relevant and I think that if we could include in, um, the, in that recommendation one that um, the council recognises that this, um, due to circumstances that we had to deal, deal with this directly rather than going through the um, City Activation Committee, I think that would be a simple addition in there that would would take care of, I think, a legitimate, even though what the CEO has said is about council taking over um, functions uh, um, is quite correct also. The other one is that I think um, yeah, um, I congratulate uh, Jody on the work she did very, very quickly on, um, on looking at all these different options, many of which are going to involve huge amounts of money and and at quite some distance into the future. Um, but we really do have to um, deal with the, um, <clears throat> with not only the Christmas traffic from um, 20th of December to 31st of January, but we may also be looking at an even bigger issue uh, in terms of providing parking um, if some of our um, worst fears come to fruition on because of the snapper ban and the invasion of um, Victor by many, many more bigger boats and, um, and uh, people with less, um, less community affiliation um, coming from Adelaide in February. Um, we, um, one of the things that I was going to say in this that we, we couldn't do it because it wasn't tasked to us and on the um, Voting Facilities Committee, but I think we, we need to explore a few more options. So what was presented in the report from Jody, excellent. I think it makes sense. It will be just, I guess, a few gallons of paint, uh, hopefully, but there will be some signs as well. Um, but the, I think we, we also need to be looking into at least testing the water to see if there's someone's willing to, to run a car hire uh, ride service um, up Jagger Road or between Jagger Road and the and the uh, boat launching ramp or even towards um, Yilke and the um, and the um, and the boat launching ramp in uh, at peak times um, and then the other one that the lever we're not pulling at all um, because it hasn't been charged to the committee is that we need to be looking at the boat launching charges on a seasonal basis. Council is, is stuck with money this year and when we've got a, a budgetary problem. It's going to cost the council a lot of money uh, to be able to put in place arrangements for the um, accommodation of hopefully all, but uh, certainly most of the, of the trailer parking um, for people who spend a lot of time on the water. Uh, most of the day in some cases during summer, catching fish and whatever. Um, and so we, we really should be, we surely should be using this opportunity to be having differential charges. We need to take care of our ratepayers, be they non-resident or resident. And I think that for instance, you know, the annual, um, the annual uh, boat launching uh, ticket which is about 90 odd dollars, um, that that should be restricted to uh, five, you know, 5211 and 5214, that's school or um, uh, residence. And um, that, the, uh, that the annual launching fees for uh, people during the 
this Christmas period, well, and including the, um, definitely including the um, snapper band season. So that could be from December all the way through to the end of February or perhaps even into March. We should be changing that, um, not wanting to make it a disincentive to come to the Victor Harbour, but as a means of controlling uh, numbers um, of uh, people using an economic lever. So, um, to me, I, um, I think we should not let this opportunity pass by that we that we modify which when the voting committee had its first meeting last year, uh, sorry, earlier this year, we almost uh, got onto that issue, but not properly, not seriously considered. Um, but it didn't change. But to me, we should be using economic levers as well to control uh, boat launching. Thank you. Councillor Littley. Um, yeah, I'd just like to say with this particular, um, the boat trailer parking, and that, that was really great work by the, uh, by the staff to come up with a number of options. Um, but I'd also like to say the, the working party jumped into action pretty quickly. Um, we do have um, eyes on bigger picture stuff, um, but the pressing need was here, is upon us to get some, some work going there so we can relieve the issues in off-street parking or around the streets there, parking along, alongside residents and um, then getting angered um, boaties when they're getting fines and, and the like, um, which happened a great deal last year. And I know that uh, Councillor Robertson um, was down there quite a bit and keeping an eye on things. And we all dealt with different people, dealt with different uh, members of our community who were pretty angered about it. Um, and it was a little bit out of hand at times. So great work by the staff and I think that the uh, working party, which you know, has struggled to come together for a bit, worked together really well to come up with some good solutions and we're all down there having a look around um, and that was a way of, you know, that's how these parties should work, these advisory groups, muck in and, and have a look and come up with some recommendations. I think it's worked well this time around. Thanks, Charles. And then after Councillor Charles, I think we'll go back into meeting procedures if that's okay with you. I'd encourage uh, Councillor Robertson to put up a, a motion about these launching fees uh, next council meeting so that we can uh, uh, get it underway. Um, otherwise, conversation and just mentioning it won't happen. Um, uh, yeah, um, at that meeting at the boat ramp, Jody, um, oh, sorry, through you, Mayor, to, uh, to Jody, there was a discussion on moving a, uh, a granite boulder on the eastern side of that um, facility uh, so that the area could be dredged there at the same time. I don't know whether that's been done. I went and had a look and it's a bit hard to tell because the tide was in. Uh, whether I think it's still sitting there because as you've put here in two points uh, on the retrieval, the launching and the retrieval of a, of a, of a boat requires the trailer to be parked after launching and the trailer to be retrieved after after the boat comes back in again and, and holding um, pattern in the water is, is part of the difficulty of the whole thing. If you can have people uh, queued in the water safely and conveniently and not being, uh, you know, and give them more facilities in that area, uh, that will take the pressure off, off the parking and the, uh, and the retrieval. Has, has, that, um, has that been considered? Because now's the opportunity to do that. I wonder whether the dredge is gone or the sand sucker is gone. <laughs> If I can respond. Please. Um, yes, we have taken that more formally back into our working group and we have it as one of the recommendations under um, the boating strategy that was being reviewed for the bluff boat ramp. Um, unfortunately, with the approval process for um, both culturally sensitive and EPA, with the dredging that's going on, we can't just change our scope of works on the go. Um, it has been, it was discussed to see how much further um, we could dredge that area. Uh, but yeah, we can't go and shift those rocks without taking the proper approvals. But it is on the list of what we're looking forward to doing in the boating strategy. No Thank one's you. listening. I'm sure they wouldn't even notice them moved <laughs> a little bit, okay. are they? Um, okay, well that's part of it. And um, perhaps an electric vehicle and you know an artificial intelligence vehicle like they've got at the um, to, to flock, flock people back and forth would be the way to go. Nice. Go back and forth, back and forth, and take clients. Thank you. Do I have a show of hands for those people that are happy to go back into meeting procedure? Thank you very much. That's everybody. 
Um, I have got a motion by Councillor Kemp, seconded by Councillor Littley, um, that we receive and note the report. Um, can I put that to the floor? All those in favour? That's unanimously carried. Thank you. Uh, recommendation two is that Jagger Road reversed angle parking be provided for additional boat trailer parking um, and the speed limit be changed. Um, do I have a recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Glasbrook and seconded Councillor Henderson. Um, do either of you want to speak to that? Councillor Glasbrook? Uh, yes, just quickly, I, I support this. Um, I totally agree there's going to be some issues, it's quite obvious, but I believe the issues will be far worse there than they will be with boats trying to reverse parallel park down on Franklin Parade, for example. And at the moment, people are parking all through those back streets in front of people's houses, in front of their driveways. This is by far, in my opinion, the best short-term solution. So I think we should support it and work on something better into the future. Thank you, Councillor Glasbrook. Do you want to say anything, Councillor Henderson? Just that I agree. I think it is the best solution of all the possible options. Thank you. Is there any further comments from the floor? If not, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. We now move to 14.1, which are minutes of council committee meetings. And the first meeting is the Disability Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee meeting of the 10th of October. The recommendation is that council receive and note the minutes. Moved by Councillor Henderson, seconded by Councillor Glasbrook. Do either of you want to speak to it? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just want to make a comment about the new committee that uh, with the ability to co-opt additional members to this committee, we now have an array of people with an amazing um, degree of um, ex expertise and experience with disability, both at a personal level and as at a professional level. And I think this will be an excellent working committee. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Any other comments from the floor? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. We now have 14.2, which is the audit committee meeting uh, minutes. Um, if you're happy to do it on block, Councillor Glasbrook. So happy from one to four. Yep, happy to move that on block. Um, do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Robertson, you're happy for that to second that on block? Yes. Do either of you want to speak to it? Councillor Glasbrook? Uh, I don't specifically have anything to say unless there's any questions. Most of the um, items, certainly the important items, are on the agenda. We're in tonight's agenda as well, and we've already discussed, so I've taken, but otherwise, I'd like to move that they be accepted. Thank you. If there's no questions for Councillor Glasbrook or any other comments, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Fifteen point one point one, which is the subsidiaries and representative reports. Um, the first one being the Victor Harbour Horse Tram Authority business plan. And the recommendation is that council receive a note, the business plan. Um, would someone like to move that way? Councillor Henderson, thank you. And seconding it. Councillor Robertson, thank you. Do either of you want to speak to that? Councillor Robertson. Yeah, um, I only seconded this, um, Mayor. I, I got the feeling that there wasn't going to be anyone else. Um, I only seconded this because um, I was really disappointed in this um, document. And otherwise, if it had lapsed, then we wouldn't have, I don't know what would have happened, I guess, it just would have dropped off the perch. Um, but I, going through back earlier when we were dealing with the um, the annual report, where the report from the Horse Drawn Tram Authority was, was to me substandard, totally. Then going back into the previous item on the audit um, reports, again, this, the, the Horse Drawn Tram Authority was not doing well. 
But this part here, which is about the future, I thought it was a really um, pretty poor document. It's a long one, it's 23 pages. There's plenty of uh, chance to, you know, a business plan. I don't think it should be, you know, even a quarter of that length. Um, it went into descriptions of things rather than having any serious vision or mission statement in there. And there was no public consultation that went on in, uh, in terms of the, the final development of this document, which I thought was um, pretty, pretty rum stuff. And um, I just think that it's, um, for me as a business plan, it doesn't have very much to say for it. And, um, and actually, uh, unfortunately, the recommendation here is to receive a note, but I think um, there should be, if I don't know the process, I'll leave it up to you guys. But to me, I would have, I would, part, I would put an additional motion in there that the council receive a note, good, okay, pass that. The second one would be that the document be sent back to the horse drawn tram authority to um, to improve it. Um, and uh, but uh, I'm not quite sure how that was worded. But Councillor Robson, if you want to make that second recommendation, you're able to do that, the, or the the chamber can do that. So it can pass that first recommendation that the council receive a note. And if the chamber would like to make a recommendation in relation to the current business plan um, to the horse-drawn tram authority, it's able to do that. Okay, I'll, I will. Um, but if we just deal with the first one first, and I'll also ask perhaps Karen Rotichinsky if she could um, speak to, um, to the current um, plan, because I know that she was assisting um, the authority with that. Um, Sorry, did you did you have anything else you wanted to say? First of all, I know I interrupted you, but uh, Karen, thank you. Um, through the chair, it definitely was um, an inaugural business plan for the authority, and I know that um, time was of the essence, having only had the board on board, board on board. Um, the board appointed from February um, in 2019, so with limited time before their due date to have their annual, um, their first business plan prepared, it did um, stifle somewhat um, their ability to consult more widely and, um, and in particular with the council in the preparation of it. That said, they are required to review their business plan within 12 months of uh, having it endorsed. Um, they may choose or you may um, seek to request that they actually um, start working on that revision um, sooner than that. Um, and I don't think that, um, that that's um, inappropriate. I know that they did lack the, um, the time to be able to consult in particular, and I know that's something that they, um, that they did want to do. Um, they're also quite mindful being um, a newly established authority that they didn't want to set their sights too high um, and lack or risk um, not being able to achieve the objectives that they put forward. They are limited with their resources and they were mindful of that when putting it together. Um, but by all means, I'm sure that they would be open to um, suggestions from this council and um, more broadly from the community. Thank you. Um, I'll deal with this first recommendation um, first, and then I'll ask the um, the chamber whether or not they have another recommendation to follow that. Um, Councillor Kemp, did you have anything that you wanted to say yes, in relation uh, to the first recommendation? Yes, I do have. Thank you. Um, why I look at this, if we don't receive a note, this report will go back anyway, and I think it'd be a strong message back to the board that you know. You, you had plenty of time to do this. I mean, the, the Act requires you to do it in six months. They've had 12 months, you know, from the initial, even when the interim uh, manager was in position, and they got, we got a change to give them extra time to do it. So if the Act requires it to be done in six months, I can't see that why they haven't got it done. You know, maybe there's issues or problems within the board as to why it couldn't get done. But the, the point is that it's an inferior business plan. It doesn't actually meet the criteria of a business plan, what I understand it to be. Um, and the fact this board was put in place to reduce the cost to council, actually looking at the second year of its business plan, it's increasing the cost to council, ever so minor, 
but it's increasing. It's not doing its job it's set to be done. So I think really this needs to go back to the council, uh, sorry, to the board. And one way of doing it is by not accepting it. Then it goes back to them automatically. And uh, with a message, I see, you know, actually provide something, some objectives, some strategies, some KPIs on how you're going to do that. There's no, even though we own the capital of it as the council, but they will be putting up some form of capital expenditure in improving their stables, their terminals, those types of things. That's part of your business plan, you know. So I think, you know, they need to be a bit more uh, scrupulous and a little bit more um, professional in, in delivering something, which is, I think, is inadequate and inferior for what we should be accepting as a council from a subsidiary. So there's a big money involved in running these subsidiaries, so I think they should be actually be doing it properly. That's why I got those board members on there, because they are professionals in what they do, so. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Henderson, do you want to say anything to close the debate? Oh, Councillor Glassbrook, you want to speak? Yeah, I'll just say that I, I agree with the, um, the words that other people have been saying. I was very disappointed with the um, business plan as well, particularly with the figures. Um, this subsidiary was supposed to be, you know, the saving grace, and I have to admit that I was very sceptical right from the start, but I, I did support it. Um, but I think we need to be careful. Um, I agree that we, we should tell them that we, you know, we, we would like some um, a better plan and maybe some um, ideas where they can improve the bottom line and improve their own source funding ratio. But we need to be positive and give them a little bit of an opportunity rather than just give them a slap in the face. Um, so I'm not quite sure how we can do that, but that's my opinion. I, I agree with what you're saying. I just think we need to be careful how we do it. I think, um, can I just respond to that, Councillor Glassbrook? That might be, and I agree with your sen sentiments, it might be in the way that if the um, Chamber wants to make a second recommendation, it may be in the way that that second recommendation is worded that um, provides them with some constructive feedback rather than what you say, slap in the face, um, and asks them to do something more. Um, while I know that Councillor Henderson wants to say something, perhaps um, between um, Director Rochinski and our CEO, they might put their minds to some wording that might um, be appropriate for a second recommendation if that you want to make one. Councillor Henderson, if there's nobody else that wants to speak, do you want to close the debate? I think the suggestion for some positive feedback and encouragement is the way to go. Thank you. Um, the debate's closed. The recommendation is that Council receives and notes the Victor Harbour Horse Tram Authority's business plan. Um, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you. Um, I'll just ask either Karen or Victoria if they've got any words for a following recommendation, if that's something that the Chamber would like. Can I just have a show of hands to see what the, if that's something the Chamber would like to look at? That's unanimous, fine. I'll just ask um, Karen. Thank you. Um, my suggestion would be wording to the effect of that council provides feedback to the Victor Harbour Horse Tram Authority, um, uh, requesting and then perhaps fill in those blanks as to what you'd like to see included um, in a revised business plan. I, th I agree some specific feedback would be important to them um, to help them to uh, achieve what you think is um, necessary in a revised plan. Yep. Yep. Councillor Glasbrook. Uh, one of the things that I would feel be important would be, I, I'm just trying to find the way they word it, is, is it their own source, own, own funding source, own their own, own source revenue percentage ratio, mm -hmm. I think it was called. Okay. Um, that they need to um, at least identify some strategies where they might be able to improve that. So that to identify strategies for own source revenue? Or to increase their own source revenue ratio? Identify strategies to increase own source revenue, yep. Any other specific, Councillor Robertson? Um, yes, Mayor. I mean, it says it all on page the first page there, page 240 on item six. A business plan must set must set out or include. And there's three things there. 
Um, I think they should do that. Sorry, uh, page an item six. Two forty. Oh, yep. The first yep. page of this um, of this uh, item. Okay. Fifteen point one. So you want to add to that then the performance targets that the subsidiary is to pursue? Just the three items there. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to yeah. um, through the mayor, um, they, the page twelve of the business plan, which is on page two hundred and fifty-four of your agenda, does have um, financial indicators, including own source um, funding ratio. Um, is there something more specific than? that that you would like to have them include? Through the Mayor, um, yeah, I mean, essentially the, the horse tram business is a, uh, is a passenger um, business. Of course, it, it's much more than that to the, to the ratepayers of Victor Harbour, but it's a, it's a, it's a passenger business there, you know, in terms of the, um, of the, the riding on there in terms of the vision as to where it's going to go. Um, the mission statement, I think, was particularly woolly. Um, I'm sorry, but no, the, um, the, the financial uh, targets there, but they're, they're also, as I think Councillor Grasbrook was pointing out before, they're, they're not particularly, um, it's not moving the uh, dynamics far enough in terms of being able to make this into an authority that is able to to take this um, iconic uh, tourist attraction to Victor and uh, to grow it into something um, not only you know more financially viable in its own right, but also something that's going to be exciting people's attention in many other ways. And the you know, selling a few extra mementos and this kind of thing to me, I'm thinking, ah, oh, no, this is um, this is this is not cutting the mustard. And um, to me, the um, it was those sort of things in there that I just felt that um, yeah, this is the sort of thing that if you'd had community involvement in that, you really could have you really could have shifted the quality of the the business plan. But uh, there wasn't any community consultation, yeah. so yeah. I might ask Karen to. Maybe respond. they were asking the horses. Yeah. Yeah. Could you could you respond to that? And the other yeah. thing is, it could be identify specific strategies yeah. rather than just say strategies. Um, um, but if you can respond, that'd be sorry, great. thank you. Through the mayor, um, on also on page fifteen, page two hundred and fifty-seven of your agenda, they have been specific with their um, sponsorship as part of their develop and diversify income streams um, strategy. Part one was de um, developing a sponsorship policy. The second one was about securing sponsorship and the indicator or target is $30,000 by the 30th of June um, 2019 and then to 10% increase um, for the following, following years. Um, just drawing your eyes to that. I'm not sure if you're wanting something further. They've also reviewed their ticket pricing and structure as a way to try and um, improve their income stream. Obviously, ticket sales are their um, largest um, income opportunity, um, and they are that they're they're basically just put in place that new structure with a view to seeing how effective it is, um, with a target to actually review that. Um, at least annually, but um, I dare say if it's not looking like it's successful more often than that, but uh, they're very much in their infancy as well in terms of trying new strategies. So if, if there are things that you specifically um, want in addition to that, I, I really do think they would appreciate specific feedback, but by all means, I agree that some further public consultation might bring about some more ideas. Mayor Jean. Um, just getting back to that sponsorship, did they get their $30,000 by the 30th of June 2019? I mean, it's already gone, that's what I'm talking about. And 
<laughs> Apologies, I believe that's a typo. It okay. is meant to be 2020, um, and they haven't yet endorsed their sponsorship policy, so they're they're only just putting putting that together um, at the moment. It hasn't yet been endorsed by the board. Just a couple of questions to Karen, please. Um, when I look at some of these um, objectives and look at some of the strategies like getting their um, quarterly financial report to us by November, that hasn't been achieved either, has it? You know, and then you've got over the marketing. Have we have a marketing plan for the horse tram? Because that's supposed to be completed by October. So I'm just wondering, you know, they've written a business plan and they're already overseen, they've already gone past their measurements and their KPIs. So that's what I'm saying. You could actually go on a website, a government website, and I did it just a quick uh, the other day, just to look at what's around in the way of templates and guides. And you can Google uh, Australian government website for business plans and guides how to do it. Download Australia a templates all there. All you got to just fill in the in the gaps, you know, with your information. It's done. It's not that hard. And I can't understand why you know you're saying it's in infancy. Going back to what sets their strategies up. There was a brilliant report done by the Horse Tram Committee before the board was put in place with strategies and directions on how to reduce costs, what they need to be doing over certain time frames. Has the board ever looked at that and gone through it and used that as a template to build their business plan? Mayor, um, through the chair, uh, yes, they have reviewed a lot of uh, past documentation. They actually had a work plan that they were working um, through um, during well, um, with Victoria as their interim general manager until the commencement of the new board, and they're almost at the end of achieving all the outcomes in that work plan, um, which which was derived from that early work that you're referring to, Councillor Kemp. Um, so I believe this is that they have drawn on that and put ideas such as the marketing plan, the sponsorship proposal, um, and, and looking at some of that front of house um, stuff as well to try and make it more appealing to people. Um, they feel that their focus really needs to be on improving the customer experience. They um, feedback they're getting from customers um, attending the office is um, that they're that they're not sure where to buy tickets, and they're really looking at that front of house thing as a as a first step towards um, encouraging greater pat uh, patronage of the um, of horse tram. Sorry. Um, I, I, as I said before, they're also quite mindful that the, the future of the causeway is still a little <laughs> uncertain in, in terms of timing. So with ambitions, um, they didn't want to uh, outstrip their ability to deliver either. But by all means, um, some specific feedback would, would be most welcome. I, I get the feeling through the Mayor that, uh, Karen, you've had to prepare this mostly. I get the funny feeling that there's, you know, you, you can't imagine these people sitting around preparing a, a plan, uh, having a discussion, yes, and you making notes and then putting all this together for them, I think is probably what has occurred. That's how it looks to me. I know that they've got a tough time with the causeway being as it is. And uh, I agree with Councillor Kemp over there who's saying that there was an excellent plan put together by some brilliant people on the previous horse-drawn tram committee and it looks like they've gone against a lot of the things. Um, these people are, you know, you read about them, they're, they're brilliant people in their own right, there's no doubt about that, but, uh, you know, uh, I just pity we've even got the board at the time being until the new, we've got the new causeway, probably shouldn't have even engaged them at this stage, we wouldn't be any worse off, to be honest. Do we have the rolling stock? We've got two useful trams, the other two not. Um, you know, there is an urgency to do certain things, like you said, front of house. The front of house is not good. Um, so you know, the, the question is, sorry but, to interrupt. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. I'm just talking and, and I'll leave it at that. If, if you but, want to do a second recommendation, um, you need to identify some specific things that you want them to do. Otherwise, it's pointless having a recommendation. So, I mean, the other, other thing that you could do is just have that first general recommendation. The council provides feedback um, and that can be done through Karen and she can have a talk to them about this conversation. Um, and it can be that council provides feedback to the tram authority um, regarding their first business plan. Um, 
it would be helpful to have a resolution. So have you got, what other strategies do you want them, or what other feedback do you want? Public consultation could be one, to increase public consultation. Councillor Littley? Um, I was going to add, put in there public consultation and also a timeline like for them to achieve these some of these strategies to come back because that seems to be the one of the major concerns is we've had a certain amount of time so putting a, an end point there that they have to work towards it yep um i know it's going to be busy over summer but um busy people get things done yep. anything else councillor robertson yes mayor I'm, this is this horse tram um attraction this is going to be its main season that's coming up i appreciate the work that was done in the report there about ticketing prices i think that that was a job well done but the direction in which they're heading is not some you know um we can't let this thing fail but we also can't let it you know be stripping out you know half a million dollars out of the budget each year the and and uh, and and embedded in this is a huge amount of, of work for the, um, the Victoria Council in terms of um, support to this, um, to this authority or to, to the workforce. Um, so it's, it's sucking more than, 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 than money. It, it have to get it right. You have to set it in a direction and to be having targets that are not just um, you know, going to be, oh, well, I'll deliver them next year. It's too important for that. Um, I don't know, we, we, probably not tonight now to figure out, you know, what the, um, but uh, I would suggest something like that the, that the council recommends that the horse-drawn um, uh, the board, horse-drawn tram authority board um, uh, meet with the um, with the, the council in the next uh, couple of weeks to go over some of these issues in camera. You know, we give us more time to think about what that might be, but to, to send a message that that the the present direction in which they're travelling is um, you know is down a rabbit hole, but not like it that way but I mean it's it's not getting a it's no good for them and it's no good for us that it that somehow this thing just this waffles on and I think we we need to to, to be able to, to discuss with them set up a meeting where with the expectation that they because now it's coming too late you know this is Christmas is upon us that um, you know, by the end of January, say for instance, or or in the early February, that we want to sit down to to go over this business plan. Wheels are not going to come off the tram in the next two couple of months, but that future direction has to be there because we're going to start talking about budgets for them. And if there's no serious um, if there's no serious business plan, then any attempt for us to be looking at at what budgets, uh, you know, in terms of what they've got recommended, a whole lot of further investments by the, uh, the council into the uh, horse-drawn tram. Uh, well, okay, if there's going to be that, but there has to be a direction, there has to be a real plan in place to, to be able to say where they're going and how they're going to get the cost down and expand the enterprise. Um, I don't believe that's there. I don't believe anyone around this table thinks it's there either. But uh, how to have that conversation? I'm not sure. Mayor, I'd like to put the motion that as it's written up there. Put a motion as written up there. This is a formal motion to put the motion. Uh, we, we? Were, we weren't out of standing orders. Um, so I've got a formal motion on the table. Do I have a seconder for the formal motion? Um, Councillor Henderson, um, all those in favour of the motion being put? That's carried unanimously. Um, so now I wait for the motion. Actually, hasn't been moved and seconded. Sorry. 
That was the motion. That was. But who moved and it hadn't been moved and seconded. So who moved and seconded it? Now I'd like to move the that motion, motion that the council provides feedback to the Victor Harbour Horse Tram Authority, requesting that there are that they revise or it revises the business plan to include identifying strategies to increase own source revenue, increase public consultation on the business plan and set a timeline for the delivery of those proposed strategies. You're doing you're actually doing it backwards. Um, it should have been so you're moving that. Um, yes. Does somebody want to second that? Councillor Henderson is seconding that. Yeah, I'll just let because you should have actually had a, there wasn't a motion there to be put because nobody had actually moved a motion. Um, so that formal motion to move the motion be put, you, you can scrub that out because there wasn't a motion there. Um, we've got a motion with Councillor Littley and Councillor Henderson. Do either of you want to speak to your motion? Does anybody want to speak to the motion that Councillor Littley has moved? Or you want to speak to it? Okay. My intent when I said that was, I did say that I did use the word put the motion. I was actually citing that motion there that was the formal, as a formal motion. I was talking through that. I believe that um, I've listened to the various conversations around, um, discussion around Councillor Robinson. You're right, we are, we do need to set some things in place. I think this gets the wheels moving in the right direction at this time of year. Um, it sets some guidance that. Uh, we can go back to the tram authority with, and it'll just start that that in place. It sends a, a, a message that we think there needs to be a review and there needs to be some more work done on it. And we do that in a, in a way that is um, providing some positive feedback that uh, we have to give this, as you say, we have to support this, we have to give them a chance um, and we'd like to work with them on it. So I think that is a start to achieving that. Thank you. Do you want to speak? Does anybody want to speak to the motion? Can I just make sure um, that you all understand what the motion is and you all know the motion that has been moved? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. We now move to the representative Thank you, um, Director Rodchinski, for your assistance with that. Um, and the recommendation is that Council receive a note, the representative reports, someone ought to move that way, Councillor Glasbrook, and seconded by Councillor Charles. Either of you want to speak to the representative reports, Councillor Glasbrook? Uh, yes, I quickly just want to mention something from the um, fortnightly bin collection system that was emailed out to us recently, for those who haven't seen. Um, since the uh, in introduction of the fortnightly waste system, there has been a decrease of 31% of the curbside general waste, which is the waste going to landfill, which is a very good result and um, much better result than um, Alexandrina received and Yankalilla. So um, congratulations to the community. Fantastic. Curbside recycling has increased by 37% and curbside green waste has increased by 76%. So the system can and has worked. Um, it's a shame we didn't do it earlier in my opinion, but so oh, thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Any other comments, Councillor Charles? And then yeah, Councillor while, you're, while you're on the Frawa thing, um, Glenn's not here tonight, but um, uh, what is needed for Frawa to participate in the buyback rubbish uh, initiative? Um, was my question and why are we not in it now because I've googled it and it seems like a, a fabulous arrangement I don't know why we're not in it um, whether somebody whether you might want to answer that uh, Councillor Glasbrook if, you, if you're permitted to and how is the uh, the in vessel uh, composter going out on uh, going on Kangaroo Island that seems like a an excellent um, um, system too uh, for producing um, high quality compost and, and then obviously reselling it. Do you know anything about those two? You put through them here? 
I don't know anything about the buyback rubbish, I'm sorry, I haven't even heard of it, but I'll Google it when I get home. Yeah. Um, the in-vessel composter is up and running. They've had some issues getting it, getting it right, um, but apparently the product that's coming out is very, very good quality and it's, um, it's very, very sought after, high demand product. Uh, there will be an opening um, soon, uh, a, a launch. So um, I think it's going very well. See, environmentally, you. there's so much that can be uh, can be done just through thrower. It's quite incredible, really. Uh, but that uh, buyback is, um, you know, out of the plastics and the re recycled materials. They're making uh, chairs and you know benches, park benches, all different kinds of things. And that's what the uh, buyback rubbish initiative is all about. Um, I see the Coastal Council's AGM uh, was done by a telephone link uh, this time, which saves councils uh, time and money and resources. Uh, and I think that's just great. Um, I also noticed that um, somewhere, I don't know what section it was now, but we know that Elliott Gardens have got this autonomous vehicle going around. And it's not too far away, probably in the next five or so years before we have autonomous vehicles or vehicles that drive themselves and people may not even buy cars anymore. They'll just dial one of these things, hop in it, go to the place and won't even need a car park. So it's really, things are moving along exceedingly quickly. And uh, it, it, just, it just struck me when I read it that, you know, I knew that it was, it was reported in the Times from not so long ago that they had one, but there it is in a retirement village possibly with a lot of people that don't even know how to operate a computer or send an email or use a mobile phone. Um, not having a crack at them, but you know, the older generation embracing autonomous vehicle, which they just move Thank around you. in. They don't have to get their car out of the garage. Councillor Littley. Yeah, I'd like to say those uh, figures on the uh, curbside collection, they're fantastic. And um, I'd like to say that is very, I think bold of the council to to go with it, and led by Councillor Glasbrook from my memory, is that uh, pushed it on, and I'm glad that we backed we backed you in on that, and um, I'm glad that the staff, you know, we, we had a very good staff to deliver that as well. So that's fantastic, great figures. Thank you. Does anybody else want to speak to the representative reports? If not, I'll put that recommendation to the floor. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. The elected member reports, we've got the mayor report. Uh, the recommendation is that council receive a note it. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Henderson, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kemp, thank you. Anyone want to speak to the mayoral report? Uh, all those in favour of receiving it? Thank you, that's carried unanimously. Uh, we need a resolution to continue. It's 9.30, if someone would like to make that way. Thank you, Councillor Glasbrook and second Councillor Littley. All those in favour of continuing? That's unanimously passed. Thank you very much. The elected members report. The recommendation is that Council receive and note it. Um, Councillor Glasbrook, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Henderson. Are there any questions or comments about the elected members report? No, if not, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you. Uh, there are no matters of urgency or questions on notice. Do we have any questions without notice? No. Do we? There are no motions on notice. Do we have any motions without notice? No, thank you. We now move on to item 22, which is confidential items. The recommendation is pursuant to section 92 of the Local Government Act. The Council orders that all members of the public, except the Chief Executive Officer, Victoria McCurdy, Director of Community Development, um, Graham Pat Pat Pathouse, Director of Environment and Infrastructure, Glenn Sanford, who is not here, so it's Acting Director of Environment and Infrastructure, Jody Roberts, it should be, Director of Compliance and Customer Services, um, Karen Rotichinsky, Group Manager, Governance and Finance, Kelly Knight Stacey, and Executive Assistant Karina Overall be excluded from attendance at the meeting for Agenda Item 22.2, .2, Economic Development Strategy Working Party Membership. The Council has satisfied that, pursuant to Section 93 of the Act, the information to be received, discussed or considered in relation to this Agenda Item is information the disclosure of which would involve the unreasonable disclosure of information concerning the personal affairs, living or dead, of those being considered for the appointment of the community representative positions to Council's Economic Development Strategy Working Party. 
The council is satisfied that the principles that the meeting be conducted in a place open to the public has been outweighed in the circumstances because the disclosure of such details of the <coughs> nominees for the community representative positions to the council's economic development strategy working party may lead to the possibility of court action. Would someone like to move that way? Councillor Littley, seconded by Councillor Henderson. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. We'll just wait for a few minutes 